What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to create an appointment booking website with WordPress step by step. Today I'll be showing you how to create an appointment booking website where users can come to your website and book appointments online. When a visitor comes to your website, they can book appointments by specific times, dates, services, and they can also pick specific employees as well. Next, the user can set specific times for their booking appointments. You can also adjust the time intervals to five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, or any amount of time you would like. Next, the user will enter in their information like their name, phone number, email, and they can also add notes regarding the appointments for more information. Next, the user can pay locally or pay with credit card directly on your website. We will be using Stripe as a payment gateway for this video. And if you don't have an account, it's completely free to sign up. When the user has confirmed their booking, they will get an email automatically sent to their inbox. This will remind them about their upcoming appointment. What's even better, you can add SMS notifications to your website to remind your customers that they have upcoming appointments just in case they forget. You can add SMS notifications for reminders, follow-ups, or just use them for marketing. There are several different style of booking forms where you can showcase your services in specific formats. You can also apply a filter where your visitors can filter through specific appointments. You can also add in custom fields. This is an additional feature where you can display custom fields and ask your clients specific information like are they pregnant or if they need help by adding in custom fields where they can explain their case or any type of question you want to ask them. It also has conditional logic where if they answer one question, a second question will propagate asking them for more information. You can also do group bookings. Group booking is great if you're hosting a large event like a yoga class or teaching to a large audience. You'll have full customization over this and you can add as many students as you like or limit your class just to a few people. You will also get a custom dashboard where you can view your appointments and see which employees have appointments and also see how much money your employees are making. You'll also have access to a variety of free templates that you can easily import on your websites with one click. Did I mention, we will also be using a free drag and drop page builder. So even if this is your first time making a website, you'll have no problem. So by the end of this video, you guys will have a fully functional appointment booking website. Now I wanna be very transparent with all of you guys. We will be using a free plugin to build your appointment booking websites. So in the first part of this video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the free version and utilizing all of the free features in this free booking plugin. Then I'll be showing you guys how to use the pro version of this plugin for those of you who decide to upgrade. The pro version does give you a lot more features. You'll be able to make more complex booking forms to accommodate your business. And I'll talk more about these features in the pro version section of this video. I also wanna let you guys know, most booking services on the internet charge a monthly subscription where you have to pay every single month, which kinda of sucks. But the booking plugin we're gonna to use today is a one-time payment for lifetime access. All right, so enough talking, let's go ahead and create your appointment booking website with WordPress. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And this is Hostinger.com. Now Hostinger.com is among the fastest and also the cheapest web hosting available. Right now they're having their Black Friday sale, but I have a discount code that's even better than their Black Friday sale. So even after watching this, you guys still will receive the maximum discount code available. And you guys also do get a free domain. Now, once you guys are here, if you guys do want to adjust the language here on the top, you guys can change this to any language that you want. So you can change it to Spanish or German or Portuguese or Japanese or whatever you want, right? So you guys can go ahead and select your language. But once you guys are here at the top, you guys will see WordPress. Go ahead and click on WordPress. Now, once you guys click on it, you'll click on claim the deal or you can just scroll down. And here we have three different plans. We have the premium, the business and the cloud startup. Now, I personally recommend the business because this actually gives you increased performance and it also gives you access to NVMe storage, which is a lot faster than SSD storage. So once you guys are here under the business plan, we'll click on add to cart. So next we're brought to our checkout page. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. And here we have to select a period. So you can select 12 months, 24 months, or 48 months. I personally recommend the 12 months. This will give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. You guys also do get the largest discount available. You guys get a free domain name and you guys also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So once you guys select your period, we'll then scroll down here. You guys will go ahead and create an account. So you'll put your email and your password your Google account or Facebook or whatever it is you guys want to use, you guys can create an account right here. And below that, we'll select our payments. So you guys can pay with credit card, PayPal, and even cryptocurrency, how about that? 
Now, what I want you guys to do is right here under the coupon code, I have a larger discount code available than their current Black Friday sale. So right here under have a coupon code, if you guys enter the coupon code Daryl10, you guys will receive, I think it's like 70 something percent off here. We'll go ahead and type it in here, Daryl10, and I'll click on apply. So it went from $53 to $48, and that gives you a maximum of 71% off the hosting package. So the next thing you guys will do is go ahead and enter in your credit card information. And once you guys enter in all your information on this page, I will go ahead and meet you on the very next page. All right, so once you guys make your payments, it'll then bring you to this little wizard. So right here, I'll click on start now. So next they're asking us, who are we creating the website for? But I do wanna skip this wizard. So right here at the bottom, I'll click on skip. I don't want personalized experience. The next option is create or migrate a website. So right here under create a website, we'll click on the select button. Next they're asking us to select a platform, but I do wanna skip this because I don't want to propagate all this stuff. I want a fresh, clean slate of WordPress. So at the bottom right here, you'll click on skip. I will start from scratch. Next, we have the free domain. So under claim a free domain name, we'll click on select. And then you'll type in your desired domain. So whatever domain that you want for your website, you'll go ahead and type it right here. So my domain is available, darylwilsontutorial.com. So right here, I'll click on continue. So next they're gonna ask you for some details. So right here, you'll put the country, you'll put if this is personal or company. And next I'll click on next step. So next we're gonna enter in our contact details. This is where you're going to enter the details to claim ownership for your domain. This is important if you guys ever want to sell your domain or if you ever want to claim ownership, you guys will need to enter in your contact details so that your information can be verified. So go ahead and fill out your information here. All right, so once you guys are done, you'll then click on finish registration. So next they selected a server for us that gives us the best performance available. So next I'll click on finish setup. Okay, awesome. So now our website is ready. Now we can either view the website or go to the control panel. But right here, let's go to the control panel first. So right here, click on manage site. So here is the hosting or dashboard and this is where you can get all the information about your websites. So here you guys can see that our plan is active. We have our domain. You guys can also set up free emails with Hostinger, pretty cool, right? And then also you can see your performance score. On the left side, you have different tabs, right? So you have hosting, you have performance, security, and this is where you can get more information about your hosting package. So here you have your name servers, you have the hosting details, and then you also have these server details here available. Resources usage, this lets you know how much you're using on your website, right? So right here, I'll click on performance and then go to page speed. So you guys can also analyze your websites by going over here and clicking on analyze. Once you guys do that, it's going to analyze your website's performance. This takes probably like, I don't know, five seconds. And here you guys can see that our website has a 97% page speed score on the page speed insights. Of course, you know, there's nothing on the website yet, so it's gonna be very fast. And the more you add to it, the slower it may get, but we'll walk you guys through all that in the video. So next we have the analytics, which shows you the top countries visiting your website and also some errors. If you guys do have any errors, they'll all be displayed right here. It also shows your total requests as well. Next we'll click on the security and click on malware scanner. If you guys ever suspect there's something on your websites like a virus or something, you guys can always check the malware scanner and they'll notify you if your website has any viruses on your websites. And next we have the SSL. Now, Hostinger actually automatically installs the SSL on all websites they propagate. And SSL is this little cool uh, padlock up here that gives you the connection secure. There was an update a few years ago that Google required all websites to have it, and now Hostinger gives it to all the websites by default. If you guys do need any help with your website, they do also offer a little chat box here where you guys can go ahead and um, you know ask them a question. And if you guys do have problems with your website, you guys can go ahead and go through the form right here. And there are support agents that can help you with any problems you guys have on your websites. So that is pretty much it for the support and the interface. Now, before we build our website, we do need to verify our domain. So the domain that we actually purchased, we need to verify that in our email inbox. If you guys don't, after two weeks, the website will disappear. So make sure that you guys um, verify it. You guys can do this by going to your email right here and you'll see that you have an email from Hostinger. This right here says important, verify your contact info. I'll go ahead and click on this email and you'll need to click on this link right here. This will go ahead and validate and verify that you own the domain. So I'll click on the link and then you'll see that the email address has been successfully verified. 
Pretty cool. You guys will also need to do the same thing for your hosting your account. So right here, verify your email address. Then I'll click on verify email. So after you guys verify your account, it'll ask you for two-way authentication, but I'm gonna skip that for now. So I'll click on cancel. So now let's go to WordPress. Right here under hosting, we'll click on manage. So next, let's install WordPress on our domain. WordPress pretty much allows us to build our website with drag and drop builders and make it really easy to build our website. We're gonna scroll down right here and click on websites. And then we're gonna click on auto installer. Here you're gonna see that we have WordPress available. So I'll click on WordPress. And here we're just gonna give our website a name. You guys can always change this later. Don't worry about it, it's not that big of a deal. But I'll put my new cool websites. Here we have the email and then we have the username and then also a password. Make sure that you guys write these credentials down because you guys will need this in order to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. Once you guys enter in your credentials, you'll then click on next. Here they're just telling you they're gonna install WordPress. So right here, let's click on install. All right, cool. So now Hostinger has installed WordPress on our domain. Right here under admin panel, you guys can click on this to log into your WordPress websites. So let's click on admin panel. Okay, so now we are logged into WordPress. This is their setup wizard, but I'm gonna skip it. I never liked any of the setup wizards, to be honest. Uh, here, we'll click on dashboard. So this is your WordPress dashboard, and this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top, I'll click on visit sites. And this is our new websites. Pretty cool, you know, they entered in some just basic demo content for us, you know, I guess just to help us get started, but uh, we're gonna delete all this and we're not gonna use any of it, but it is still nice they gave us something to work with. So let's go back over here to dashboard. So before going any further, now let's adjust the general settings. So over here under users, let's click on profile. Now you guys can actually change the color scheme of the back end of your website if you want blue or ocean or midnight. I like midnight the most because it's really easy on the eye to see what you're doing, right? Now we're gonna scroll down right here and this is where you guys can also update your email. This is where your credentials will be sent to in case you guys do forget your password for WordPress. They'll be sent to this email right here. So make sure that you guys do have access to it. We'll go ahead and scroll down. Here you guys can make a new WordPress password. So if you guys do wanna change your password, you guys can do that right here. And then once we're done with that, we'll click on update profile. Next, we're gonna go over here to settings and click on general. Here, you guys can go ahead and also update the email if you guys wanna do that. And if you guys do speak any other various languages, right here under site language, you guys can change this to any language you want. I mean, they have tons of languages you guys can use right here. So you guys can select Spanish or German or French or any language that you guys want. Once you guys do select that, we'll scroll to the bottom and click on save changes. The next thing we're gonna do is update our permalinks. So right here, I'll click on permalinks. So here we have the permalink structure and you always wanna set this to post name. The reason why you do this is because you want your website to say, you know, mycoolwebsite.com slash about us, right? Or slash contact us, not all these random numbers and letters, and it doesn't make any sense. Post name is actually optimal for SEO. So go ahead and select post name, scroll to the bottom, and then click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and click on our dashboard. Now let me show you guys how to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. So right here, I'm gonna log out. So I'll click on log out. And I'll go ahead and just visit our websites. And as you guys can see, it brings us to our websites. But as you guys notice, there's no way for me to log into the websites. If you guys do wanna log into your websites, all you gotta do is go to your website, type in dash WP dash admin and press enter. This will bring you to the login screen where you guys can log in with your WordPress credentials. So you'll enter in your WordPress credentials here. I'll click on remember me so I don't have to keep logging in. Then I'll click on login. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of WordPress from any location. All right, cool. So we got our website up and running and now we're gonna go to the next section. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you all how to import a starter template and use the drag and drop page builder. It's actually really simple. And after maybe 10 minutes of just messing around with it, you'll totally get the hang of it. All right, so let's get started. All right, now let's go ahead and install a WordPress theme. So over here under appearance, let's click on themes. 
Now, my WordPress theme controls various parts of the website, like the header, the footer, blog layouts, and maybe even different layouts for uh, WooCommerce products. It doesn't necessarily build the website itself, but it's more of an outside shell for the page builder to build the websites. Now, the one that we're going to use because it offers the most starter templates is the Astra theme. So up here under Add New, let's click on Add New. Now, over here under Search Themes, let's type it in, A-S-T-R-A. And then we're going to find the Astra theme. So this is it right here. All you got to do is click on install now and then click on activate. All right, cool. Right here, it's saying if you want to install the starter template plugin, we can do that. But I just want to show you guys where it is manually just in case this didn't propagate. So I'll go ahead and close that. Over here under Astra, let's go to the dashboard. So this is like their little dashboard where they just say like, hey, how are you? And they, you know, just have like a little welcome video and stuff like that. At the top right here, you'll see starter templates. Go ahead and click on starter templates. And this is also where you guys can install and activate the plugin. So I'll click on install and activate. And this is gonna give you guys access to more than 280 pre-made starter templates that you guys can pick for your websites. So now it's asking us to select a page builder. Now the one that we're gonna use for this video obviously is gonna be Elementor. It is the easiest drag and drop page builder for WordPress. Beaver Builder is meh and the block editor, no. <laughs> like just, just no, it's, it's a light years away. So uh, let's go ahead and click on Elementor. So here is a list of templates you guys can choose for your websites. Now, really quickly, the ones that don't say premium on it, these are the free templates. And these ones right here that say premium, this is available in the pro version of Astra. I do have another video where I cover Astra Pro and the sort of templates, but I'll leave that in the description. But what we can do here is let's say that you guys are a local business. We can click on these categories right here and then it'll display templates based off those categories, right? So you'll see here they have some for online coach, locksmith. Uh, I mean, they have so many guys. I mean, literally they have hundreds, right? So uh, what we're gonna do first is I just wanna show you guys how to use the uh, page builder with a template. You guys can always import more starter templates later. So for right now, let's actually work on the same template together just so we're all on the same page. Right here under professionals, you're gonna see law. Let's go ahead and click on law. And what I want to do here is I want to use one of these templates. So here we have family lawyer. I think this is ideal because we can create specific uh, appointments. We can create categories. Um, so for right now, let's click on family lawyer. And for all the templates, once you guys click on a template, you guys will be brought to this page right here where you guys can upload your logo. If you guys don't have one, don't worry about it. I'll be showing you a really cool website where you can get a free logo for your websites. Or no, it's not free, it's five bucks. So uh, yeah, but for now, let's just go ahead and skip and continue. Now, the first thing is any template that you guys choose, we have a variety of colors. So what's really cool with Astra is they have all these different color schemes. And you guys can choose these and they will actually reflect on the entire websites. So you'll see here, we got some different shades, right? Uh, here we have different colors. So it's pretty cool, right? You know, but I do like their default colors for this one. I think a lot of the default colors they've made are, you know, the way they're supposed to look. And below that we have different fonts. So you guys can choose between this one here, this one. Now I always, you know, I always like Poppins. I think Poppins is a great font but you guys can change all this later. So it's really not like, you know, like the shark tank where you have to make a decision right now. You guys can uh, change fonts when you're building your websites. So right here, I'll click on continue. And what I'm gonna do here is at the bottom, I'll click on submit and build my websites. And this will start building and propagating all the pages and images for your websites. So just give this like 15 seconds. All right, cool. Our website was built in just 20 seconds. How about that? Now, right here, I'll click on view your websites and voila, we now have a beautiful lawyer website, right? So here you'll see that the starter templates will propagate all of the images, all of the content, the colors, and it'll make it look really, really cool. So yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and scroll back up here. I'll click on the about us page. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down here. It looks like everything worked out good, right? So there we go. Now, what I'll do here is click on the logo and go to our homepage. All right, so now that we know how to import starter templates, let me give you guys a 10 minute overview about how to use the Elementor page builder. Now, if you guys already know how to use Elementor, you guys can just move on ahead. But for those of you who are brand new, let me just give you guys a quick overview about how to use this drag and drop page builder. So at the top, you'll click on edit with Elementor. 
go ahead and close this. All right, here we go. So on the left side, you're gonna see elements. And these elements, you can simply drag and drop onto your websites. For example, here we have a heading text, right? So if we wanna you know, put in a text right here, I'll just take this and I'll just drag and drop it. Now, when you guys drag and drop an element, you'll get these options on the left side. There is a content tab. This essentially controls the content of the elements. You have the style tab. This controls the color and also the topography. And then we have the advanced options. This can do things like, you know, make more space. And it can also add in uh, effects where you can add in really cool effects here, like the motion effects. So for example, if you want this to fade in or you want this to bounce in and up like that. And they got a bunch of other really, really debatable ones here. Yeah, wobble, ugh, that is ugly. Don't, don't do that guys, it's terrible. So let's say I wanna make this text white. I'll just, you know, make it white and voila, right? And we can click on these little nine squares up here and we can add in more. So if I wanna add in a button, I'll drag and drop a button. And then here I can link, you know, to other pages. So I can link to maybe our contact us page, right? And what's really cool is Elementor will actually propagate the contact page for us. Pretty cool. And then for the style, we can change the color, we can change the border radius. And then for the advanced, obviously we can, um, you know, make the button bigger or we can add more space and so on and so forth, right? So those are pretty much the styling options and every single element with Elementor has these styling options. Now let's say for example, you guys want to get rid of this button, just right click on it and then delete it. Right click and then delete it, right? Makes sense? All right, cool. Now let's say for example, you guys want to change this background, right? You see these little six dots right here? This section right here will control the entire background. So what I wanna do here is go to style and then just change this background, right? You guys can also add in a background color, a gradient, a video, whatever, you know, there's so much you can do here, but let's just stick to the basics and keep this simple. So I'll click on choose image. And what's really cool with Astra is there's this free image tab right here. And this is an integration with Pixabay. And let's say for example, you guys want to find something that relates to lawyers right here. Uh, we can actually choose the horizontal. So we can make it like, a, we can look for images that are you know horizontal and stuff like that. And then you can go through here and like, you know, uh, use this one, use this one and so on and so forth. So that is a pretty cool integration but I'll just click on the media library they have. And what we're gonna do is scroll down and let's just say I wanna use this one, right? I'll just select that one and voila, we now have a, a new landing page, right? And you guys can just say, you know, I wanna delete that and maybe just add like a gradient or something. You know, if you guys wanna add a gradient here with like, you know, two different colors, you guys can do that. And then you can control the location and also the angle and stuff like that. See that, woo, look at that. But uh, yeah, you know, this is getting a little too crazy. So, you know, I like to keep things simple, guys. And believe it or not, simplicity is key, right? Just keep things simple. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add this guy right here. I think that looks great, right? So that's how you guys can pretty much add an elements. Now, let's say, for example, you guys scroll down your page and you wanna change something, just double click on it and then just, you know, about, about our agency. And you guys can, you know, keep adding in more right here if you wanna add in more stuff and so on and so forth. You guys can also duplicate images and elements. So let's say for example, you wanna duplicate this. I can duplicate this and I'll drag and drop it up there, right? So you can duplicate elements and then drag them on top of other elements as well. But let's say for example, you guys wanna add a new section, right? Maybe you want something in between here. Here you'll see this plus icon and we have this plus section and we have these columns, right? We have the down direction, the right, and then we have these columns. This is actually referring to the Flexbox container. I do have a tutorial on it, guys, but for beginners, I don't think you guys really need it, right? So let's just select three columns, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna make this 33%, right? So I want all of them even, right? Even, even Steven, here we go. 33%, okay, like that. Okay, now I'll click on the nine squares. And let's say, for example, you guys just wanna start dragging in elements. Let's, let's do it, let's, let's do it, here we go. The heading, right, our websites, and then maybe here you wanna drag something else in here, like a divider, right? 
I like dividers because dividers are actually a way where you can add in like design and decor. This is actually a divider right here. You'll see that. So they just basically customized it. So for the style, they just added more weights and they changed the color, right? So you can do something like that. Now you can see here how, I don't really know how they did this. So what I can do here is right click on this, copy this and I can paste the style. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking all the settings from this divider and I'm transferring it to that divider. Pretty pretty damn cool, right? <laughs> like like uh, page builders have come a long way. So uh, now let's add in a text editor here. Whoops. Now I made a mistake, right? That was an accident. So what I wanna do here is click on the history and let's just go back. Look at that, let's just go back, okay? And I'll try that one more time. I wanna put it below, there we go. I don't wanna put it on the side, I wanna put it below. And then also I can add in an image right here, right? Make sure it's below this divider thing, there we go. And then I can just add in an image, right? Maybe this, this girl right here, right? Throw in a button. This could be like our services, right? You know, this could be like our services, right? So maybe like we're like a criminal lawyer place or something. Now this looks cool, right? But I wanna duplicate this. I don't wanna have to do this for every single one. So what we can do is just like we duplicated the elements, we can also duplicate columns, right? So right here, I'm gonna right click, duplicate, and also duplicate. And then I'll delete these ones over here because I, I no longer need these, right? Pretty cool. So now we have a three column row and all you can do here or what I recommend is just to change the title, change the images, and then you have a fully built section in a matter of seconds. Now, another cool thing is you can also duplicate this entire section. So up here, I can right click on these six dots and then also duplicate it as well. So we have another section right here. So let's say you have six services, you can add in all your services right here or your members or whatever you wanna do for your booking websites. Now let's say for example, you guys want to add space here cause see how it's too close to the top? Well, let's click on the six dots right here, go to advanced. And this is where we can add in padding, right? So a padding is space. And this is where the advanced options really come into play, right? So I wanna add in some space there. And then also we might wanna add in some space in between this section too, right? Uncheck the values. And let's just give a little bit of breathing room. You know, it's a little bit too cluttered in my book, right? Here we go. Cool, right? All right, there we go. So you guys can see that this is a fully like drag and drop builder, really simple to use. And if you guys do wanna learn more about this page builder, I do have a four hour video that's right, a four hour video on how to use this page builder. And I will leave that in the description below of this video. But I think just messing around with this page builder on your own free time, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. So whenever you guys do wanna save your progress, all you gotta do is click on update here at the bottom. And then I'll click on view page. All right, let's take a look here. You'll see our services are all done and everything looks great. So you guys can go through every page right here and then start to design and customize it, right? So you can, you know, fix this page, go to this page and then fix it and so on and so forth. So it will take you guys a little bit of work. So you guys might wanna do that on your own free time. I think this link is actually linking to another permalink. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it looks like it is. So that actually leads to our next section. And what we're gonna do is, I'm now gonna show you guys how it's to fix this menu right here. Cause you can see this home page is actually linking to a wrong page. And also how it's to um, add pages to your menu. So here at the top, let's go over here to the dashboard. And then we'll go over here to appearance and click on menus. So right away, you'll see this custom link right here. So I'm not really sure why it's linking to this random page, but I'm gonna get rid of that, right? So now the home page is linking to our current home page, right? So now let's create some pages and then also add them to the menu, right? So up here, plus new page. And what I wanna do is make our staff page, right? So our staff, click on publish and publish. Now, if I view this page, you guys are gonna see that this is an empty page and it's also not assigned to our menu. So we need to assign this to the menu. So first let's assign the staff page to our current menu. So let's go back over here to menus. And here under the view all pages, I'm now gonna click on our staff and then add that to the menu. 
and I'll rearrange it right here by drag and drop it. And then I'll click on save menu. All right. And then I'll click on visit site. And then over here, we'll see the our staff page. All right, so here we go. Here is our staff page. Now I wanna design this page. So right here, let's click on edit page. And then let's click on edit with Elementor. And let's design this page really quick. All right, now the first thing is right here, instead of actually you know going this route and building it from scratch, I wanna use some of the templates. So there are a lot of templates that we can use. So right here, you'll see there are starter templates. And here are a bunch of starter templates that we can use for our page. But I wanna click on blocks and I wanna find something like our team, right? Because this is our staff page, right? So we can import any of these blocks right here. So for example, I'll just import something like uh, this right here. And then I'll import the block. Okay. And then again, we can go ahead and design this, right? So what we can do is we can change this to like Daryl Wilson. And then I will, you know, adjust this to this guy here, right? Ah, looking good. Maybe add some color to this page, you know, it's, it's too black and white. So let's add this guy here. And then also we'll change this one to this girl right here. All right. And then once I'm done, all I'm gonna do here is click on updates. All right. And then I'll click on view page. All right, there we go. So you'll see that our page looks great. We have our footer here and then all of our content here. It looks like we can't see our menu that well. And that's probably because we need to fix it in the theme customizer. So let's go ahead and click on our logo. All right, now let's go ahead and open up the theme customizer really quick and let's fix that page. So right here, I'll click on customize. Now for every theme for WordPress, there is a theme customizer. This essentially controls like the header, the footer, and just has a lot of other features. Now I do have another tutorial on the Astro theme where I go through in every option with this theme, but I'll leave that in the description if you guys do wanna watch it. But for the R staff right here, you'll see that this menu is a little hard to read. And that's because we're using a transparent menu. So over here under header builder. So here are the options for the header right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna click on the primary menu and I wanna adjust the color, right? So for the design, I wanna give it a specific color. So for the color right here, maybe we can just change this to like something like black, right? Just so we can see it, right? Pretty simple. And then click on publish. Then I'll close this. All right, and if I go to our staff right here, you'll see that on the other pages, we can now see the menu because on the home page we have a transparent menu with specific font settings. So that's how we can also adjust the menu color for our website. Now, if you guys do wanna learn more about Elementor or the Flexbox container, I do have a full another tutorial right here. And this tutorial will show you guys how to use the Elementor free version and also the pro. I cover everything in this video. As you guys can tell, it's a much larger in-depth video that goes through all the options. So I will leave this tutorial in the description below of this video if you guys do wanna check that out later. All right, cool. So now that we have our website up and running, you guys know how to use the drag and drop builder. Now let's go to the next section and integrate the booking plugin. So we are going to install a free booking plugin called Bookly to create our appointment booking websites. Now we're gonna utilize all the free features in this section of the video. And then after that, I'll be showing you the pro features for those of you who decide to upgrade. You guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so in this part of the video, we are now going to integrate the booking forms onto our website using a free plugin called Bookly. Up here at the top, let's go to dashboard. And over here under plugins, we'll click on add new. And for search plugins, we're gonna type in Bookly. So B-O-O-K-L-Y. There are tons of other booking plugins out there, but I do feel like Bookly is pretty solid if you guys want something simple, not too complex. Here is the booking plugin. It is the Bookly plugin right here, WordPress online booking and scheduling plugin. Once you guys see this plugin, go ahead and click on install now, and then click on activate. Okay, so once you guys install the Bookly plugin, you're gonna see that there's this new option on the left side that says Bookly. Go ahead and click on Bookly. 
Now, this is their initial setup. You guys will only have to do this once and then all the options will propagate. So right now, go ahead and give your company a name, right? So if you are a company with a name, like most people, just go ahead and type it in right there. I'm gonna type in lawyer LLC. The industry, we're just gonna put legal and my company size. And then here is my email and then I'll click on continue. Now, right here, we're gonna put in our staff. So who is actually taking the booking? You're gonna put that person's name right here. So I'm gonna put Daryl Wilson, put in my email. Before YouTube, I was actually going to law school and then I, you know, kind of, I, I was working at a courthouse and then I actually changed my mind halfway and did YouTube, you know, completely different directions. So I actually did intern at a children's courthouse uh, was handling litigants who couldn't afford lawyers. It's pretty interesting. So I'll go ahead and put in a number here. Okay, and then I'll click on continue. So now we have a service and don't worry about this. You know, you guys can just enter something very broad here. It doesn't have to be like exact, but this will be like legal services or legal consultation. And the duration uh, for right now, I'll just put 30 minutes. Now in the Bookly settings, you guys can actually change the intervals to like an hour or two hours or five minutes or whatever you wanna change. Next, I'll click on continue. And then it's saying, all right, cool. Let's just go ahead and uh, propagate our form. Just for tutorial's sake, I'll just go ahead and do that. Make sure that you guys copy this bookly form right here. Okay, so make sure you copy this short code. And then once you guys copy it, let's click on finish. Now, right away, they're asking you to collect information to help bookly. It's up to you if you guys wanna do that or not. I'll click on disagree and then also disagree one more time. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we now want to add the booking form to our website. So we need to make a page for it. So up here, plus new, page. You guys can add this anywhere you want on your website, even on pages that have already been created. But just for tutorial's sake, I'm just going to make a new page for it. So I'm gonna put in a booking page. And then what I'm gonna do here is paste in that short code. So you're gonna see bookly form. Now, one thing I also do wanna note, if you guys are using Gutenberg, this plugin has an integration for Gutenberg. So right here, you'll see that you can enter the booking form right here as well, just in case you don't want to copy and paste the short code from the back end. Once you guys enter that short code, I'll click on publish and publish. And then let's view the page. So I'll click on view page. And here is our booking page. Pretty cool, right? So right here, you'll see there is no category because we have not created one yet. So I'm just gonna select uncategorized. Here's the service, here is Daryl. And then right here, users can go ahead and click on next and take a look at our appointments. So we have not configured anything, right? So it's just gonna give us a lot of info, right? Or a lot of bookings. So let's say for example, someone picks a time for their name, they'll put Johnny. Here they'll put in their number. Now I'm in Thailand guys, so that's why it always comes up Thailand first. So that's where I live but you can put United States because you know I'm American. So I would put you know the American flag and then the number and then put the email and then notes. Hey man, great video. <laughs> I do get people that actually fill these out and send me like little love notes all the time on YouTube. It's actually really funny. So I'll put in a number here. I'll click on next and voila. So the booking has now been confirmed and people have now booked on your websites. Now that's a broad overview about it, but there are a lot of settings that we have to adjust. Now, one thing I do want to fix really quick is, now here I'm gonna click on the home page. Now you don't have to follow me here, but what I wanna do is I wanna link people to that booking page when this says book appointments. So really quickly, before we actually go into the settings, I just want to uh, link that just because we're gonna go back and forth and I don't want to constantly have to load that page, you know? So right here, I'll click on the button. And then for the link, I'm just gonna type it in, booking. And then here, booking page propagates. And then I'll click on updates. And once that's done saving, I'll go to view page. And then once a user comes to my page, and if I click on book appointment, it'll take them directly to that booking page right there, which is very convenient, right? So let's go ahead and go back to the home page. Better yet, let's go back to the dashboard. So let's go back here and click on dashboard. 
All right, let me give you guys a quick little overview about these settings. So right here, you're gonna see Bookly. Here is all the settings for the Bookly plugin. They also do have this thing called Bookly Cloud. I will be talking about this a little bit later. So the Bookly Cloud has various features like SMS notifications, Zapier integrations, a cloud cron and just a few other integrations now these are generally services that can help you with your booking website these are not required right but um, you can always go ahead and use these on your websites i will be showing you all how to use the sms notifications a little bit later in this video because i felt that that was probably the most crucial service that they offer and i think most people might want that but we'll come back to the booking cloud a little bit later so right here, let's go ahead and click on a dashboard. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go through each of these settings and I'll explain to you how the Bookly plugin works. So the first tab is just the dashboard tab. This is where you're gonna see your revenue, your appointments and so on and so forth. The next one is the calendar tab. The calendar tab is essentially going to display the booking appointments right here, right? So once people book on your website, you will see that there will be appointments that you can uh, take a look at. Also, if you click on the calendar, you can manually add appointments. So if someone is calling your business and they're saying, hey, Daryl, can I book a legal consultation on November 5th? I'm like, well, let me check here. You know, let's go to November 5th, right? It's like, no, that's Sunday, man. We can't do that. But we can do November 6th. And then I'll ask them what time, saying, all right, what time do you want to book at? So I'll say, tell you what, man, I got a spot open from 10 o'clock to, uh, you know, 10 to 11, right? Now, the next option is the customers. Now, Bookly will actually record anyone who has previously booked on your website and they'll be available right here. However, if this is like a brand new phone call, all you got to do is saying, all right, let me let me get you registered in the system, you know? So I'll go to new customer. We'll put in their name. Let's say uh, Jenny Craig. Jenny Craig has called us, right? And Jenny Craig's phone number, I'll get her I'll get her uh, her info right here. It's the United States. Where where is it? Here we go. There we go. I'll get her phone number, right? And then Jenny at AOL.com. And then here we can add in any sort of notes, right? So if she has a friend or she has a special diet, or if there's a special request, we'll just put that there. So I'll put that she's handicapped. So she might need like special assistance, right? So handicap. And then I'll click on save. All right, so here is the appointments. And all we gotta do next is just click on save. All right, so after we book the booking, now what we can do is confirm it. So right here, let's go to next month. And you will see, here we go, we got our Monday appointment, it is approved, and here is our appointment. So all of your appointments will show up here in a really nice clean format under the calendar section, right? So that is the calendar, right? This is where you guys can manually add appointments and also view your upcoming bookings. Next, we have the appointment section. So now all of your appointments that are upcoming, they will be displayed right here. And this is also where you guys can edit your appointments. So if I click on edits, you'll see that here we have the information about our current appointments. And let's just say they called and they canceled. We can just go over here and just, you know, cancel their appointments or whatever, right? Um, we can also go ahead and edit the customer as well. You know, if we enter their details wrong, we can do that there. We can also adjust the time, the date, and so on and so forth. So this is where you guys can uh, edit your appointments. If you guys do want to add one, what you can do is also do it from here as well. You guys can do it from the calendar, and you guys can also do it right here directly from the appointment section. The reason why I think calendars might be better is because calendar actually shows you visibly what's available, right? So, you know, it, it, they both work. You know, you can do it from the appointments or the calendar section. So up here, new appointments. So here is where we can create new appointments. So for example, we'll put Daryl Wilson, you know, put our consultation. And then over here, we'll go ahead and put in these seconds. Here is our time period. And then we'll select a customer, right? And of course, you might have to create one, you know, because if they're calling you for the first time, you will need to create a new customer. And then once you're done, you'll just click on save. And then over here, we'll just go ahead and change this to the next seven days and you'll see our booking appointments. So that is how you guys can add appointments. You guys can do it from the calendar or you guys can do it from the appointments directly. Next, let's click on the staff members. So this is where you can enter in your staff, right? So right now we have Daryl Wilson and he is a lawyer and we can go ahead and click on edits and then we can edit his details. So here we have his full name, right? You guys can also select this from the users. You guys can go ahead and manually create users in WordPress and I'll show you how to do that just a bit. But let's say for example, I wanna add in a picture of Daryl. 
we'll put in a picture of Daryl, right? Now this will propagate on the contact form just depending on the settings that you adjust. Here is the email for Daryl, the phone number, and here is some little information about Daryl. So like Daryl Wilson graduated from CSUN and CSU, CSULA and so on and so forth, right? And then over here, we can adjust the color and set the visibility, right? Here we have services. Now we're gonna create more services a little bit later. However, you guys can actually exclude or add members to be able to perform those specific services. So let's say for example, Daryl is not available for legal consultation. We will just uncheck that, right? So as we added more services, we will come back to this and this will make a little bit more sense. Here we have the schedule. So right here, you're gonna enter in Daryl's schedule, right? And you might wanna add in a break, right? So I think the break that we're gonna add is like 12 to one, right? That's like a lunch break, right? So you'll need to go through here and put in his schedule and then also add a break, right? Because if you don't set a break right here, the users can book from 12 to one. And if he's on lunch, you know, you might have a pissed off customer. So uh, you can go ahead and add in breaks right here. And then also for days off, you guys can set specific days off for specific members. So Daryl is off, you know, uh, let's see here. What is it? October 31st. So Daryl is off Sunday, Monday, right? And we can repeat this. We're not working on this day and we can repeat this every year, right? And the same thing, right? So Daryl is not working. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and save that. Okay, so you will need to actually spend some time here and set off their dates and stuff like that and, you know, uh, put their dates off and their schedule. This can take some time, guys, but, you know, scheduling always takes time no matter where you go, right? So uh, that's how you guys can basically create your own staff, add them to the schedule, and then also give them days off. Now, I did mention there is a section where you guys can edit from WordPress users. Let me just show you guys where that is. It's not necessarily required, but just in case you're curious, here you have users. I'll click on all users. Now this is where all the users will show up at, and this is where you can add your staff. So right here, I'll click on add new. And for the username, I'll put Daryl Wilson, and then Daryl, or let's see here, howdy at darylwilson.com. Daryl Wilson. Okay. And here we can generate a password for Daryl, right? If you want to do that. Um, and then right here under role, what we can do is just give him like the subscriber or admin role. If you do give your staff the admin role, that means they can log into your website and see all the information. So that's really up to you as a business owner if you want to go that route. If not, you can just make it a subscriber, right? But I'll just click on add new. Now, regardless, this user can actually log into the website and they can actually see all of the appointments that they have been booked for, which is pretty cool. So you can have staff take a look at your information just by sending them their login credentials and they can log into WordPress like I showed you guys earlier, right? All right, let's go ahead and go back over here. So we have the uh, staff members. Now in the free version of Bookly, I believe you can only have one staff member. So up here, if I click on add staff, now, if you guys do wanna add more staff, unfortunately, this is a pro feature. So if you click on add staff, uh, there is only one available that you can add. However, you can always just have people book on behalf of your company and not use staff members if you wanna bypass that. But if you guys do wanna add more staff members, I'll be showing you how to do that in the pro section of this video. It's really, really simple actually, right? So now that we know how to do members, now let's go ahead and scroll down and let's click on services. Now in the services section, this is where things can get really uh, broad, right? So the first thing that we can do here is before we add services, we can create categories for services. So right here, you're gonna see categories. And I highly recommend to make categories because if you don't, it's gonna say uncategorized in the box like I showed you earlier. So right here, we're gonna put legal services. And then we can also do something else. Like besides legal services, we can offer something else like paperwork. So we have legal services and then we also have legal paperwork. Now there is another strategy here. If you guys have multiple locations, you guys can always add a location here and have users select locations instead. For example, Los Angeles, right? Or we have Santa Barbara. 
So what I'm saying here is you guys can actually use this plugin to create specific service categories, or you guys can use this for locations. It really depends on how you wanna approach your business. You can use locations or you can use it for services. Also right here, you guys can actually go ahead and add in more information. So if you guys do wanna enter you know, a picture for legal services, you guys can do that. This may propagate on the search form just depending on the settings that you select, right? But it's not a requirement. So we'll come back to that later. So I'm gonna get rid of this for now, but I'm just notifying that you can use this for locations if you have multiple locations. So now that we actually created categories, I want to first add this one to a category. So I'll click on edits. And then for the category for this one, this is legal services, right? Here, I'll click on save. And now I wanna make another one, right? So here, add a service. And this will be like the marriage paperwork. Okay. And here, you know, we'll just go ahead and, uh, you know, put this in the legal paperwork, right? Our staff, we're gonna put all staff, right? So here we have the time, and depending on how long this will take, you can enter the duration right here, right? Now, this says time slot length. You guys can also set specific time intervals for this specific uh, event, right? So let's say, for instance, you want to say, you know what, this is gonna be like, you know, two hours or something like that. We can go ahead and select the time slot length for this specific service with this specific time interval. Okay, but however, we can always go to the general settings and we can set the time interval for all of the settings from one location. But we'll get to that in just a little bit, right? But I'm just showing you guys that you can do this if you wanna go that route, right? So just for now, I'll put 30 minutes, right? I wanna keep it same. Here, I'll click on save. So now let's make one more here. So we have marriage paperwork. So this is gonna be business paperwork. Now, just to give you guys a, you know, just to help you guys think this through, these can be yoga classes, this can be barber shops, this can be anything, right? So I'm just giving you guys a general idea here. So business paperwork, this is gonna go under legal paperwork, all staff, time, we'll just do 30 minutes, save, okay? So just to be clear, you know, you guys can make this for anything, right? So these can be yoga classes, this can be for a haircut, this can be for a consultation and so on and so forth. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a category and then I'm making a specific service for that category. So I'll make one more here, add services, and this is gonna be serving clients, create service. And what serving is actually is whenever you sue someone, you have to serve them, right? So this company is offering a service in order to serve those people. So right here, we'll do legal services, We'll select all staff and I'll click on save. Okay, so now we have two services with two categories. We have legal consultation, serving clients, and then for legal paperwork, we have marriage paperwork and business paperwork. So now that we have our services, I think we're pretty much done with this section. Now in the free version, you guys can only add up to five services. Anything more than five, that's a pro feature and you will have to upgrade to the pro version. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. So now that we covered services, now let's talk about customers. This is where you guys can see your customers and also you can add more customers. Just like we did earlier on the calendar and also the appointments, you can add in customers manually right here. So right here for full name, we're gonna put Paddywhack and Paddywhack's number, right? And then Patty at able.com. And then she's like the crazy client, you know, just, just so we all know. She's, she's the crazy one, you know? All right, there we go. Patty Wack was actually my dog. She was, she was an amazing dog, right? So that is our clients. And then you could always search for all your customers right here, which is pretty convenient, okay? Now, next we have email notifications. Now, whenever a client signs up for your service or whatever, they will get email notifications. And you guys can modify those emails right here. So for example, here we have the notifications and the notification a customer about their approved appointments. Right here, let's click on edit. So this is exactly what it's gonna say. So right here, this is the subject and you can change this to fit your business you know, culture. Here is the dear client name. This is a confirmation that you have booked your service name. We are waiting for you at the company address, appointment date, and appointment time. So what these right here are, this is dynamic content. So it's gonna dynamically update depending on what the customer entered. 
Now I am a lawyer's office, right? So I wanna change the subject, your legal appointments. Now we have codes right here. If you guys do wanna add in more codes, you guys can add it right here. So if you wanna add in like the appointment dates, the appointment notes, which we, we shouldn't, because remember how we called her crazy earlier, we don't wanna do that. Um, here we have like the booking number uh, and a bunch of other short codes you guys can add. If you wanna add in like the company logo, I'll copy this. And for example, we can put the company logo here, like at the top, just to let them know, right? And of course, you guys can go through this and, you know, to add all these staff info, you can add your phone number and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and click on save notification. So what you guys will have to do here is you guys will have to go through each of these and adjust these to your liking and also adjust them to your business culture, right? Now, next is notification of staff member. So if you do have many staff members, what you can do here is just, you know, let them know, say, hey man, you got an upcoming appointment, don't forget. And these will go to directly to their client's email. Now, the next one is about the notification to staff members. So really quick, I'll click on edit here. And I've already showed you guys how to do this, but what I do wanna show you all is the notification settings. So just depending on how you wanna approach your business, here are some more options, right? But I think the most important one here is the recipients. So you can select this to staff. However, you can also select it to administrators. Remember earlier how we actually created a user and we assigned them to the administrator, right? That was an option. So when you guys do create users in the backend, you can add them as administrators and they will then receive the emails, right? Now, if you wanna create custom where you can add in multiple email addresses, you can add that right here. So for example, I'll add in Daryl, or I'm sorry, howdy at darylwilson.com and also PC hoarder at gmail.com. This essentially means that me as a boss, I will get their booking and them as an administrator or an employee, they will also get that notification. So it just really depends on how you wanna approach your business. But this way, as an owner, I can see all of the emails that my staff are also receiving. Okay. And once I'm done with that, I'll then click on save notification. So on your own free time, you guys will need to go through each of these and adjust this to fit your business culture. If you guys are just a one man show, most of these really won't apply to you. You can leave most of this like, you know, as default, but if you have multiple members and you want them getting emails, that's where you're gonna have to go in and make a few changes with these email notifications. Here we have settings. So here we have the sender name and then we have the sender email. Now the sender email, this is the email that we use to sign up with WordPress, right? So you wanna make sure that the email that you use correlates to WordPress because that's what it's gonna show when a user actually gets the email. It's gonna show the sender email right here, okay? So if you guys do wanna change this, you guys can go ahead and change it. But I do believe you must also change it in the WordPress settings as well because that's where the email will be routed to, okay? So yeah, that's the email notifications, right? Now, a little bit later, we are actually going to install an SMPT plugin to route these emails. If you guys use the test email notification, many of the emails may go to spam or they may not be received. It really depends on the installation of WordPress, right? So for example, I'm gonna enter in my other email right here and we can test this really quick. So what I'll do here is send this. And if it doesn't work, no problem, I'll be showing you guys how to install an SMPT plugin in order to forcefully route the emails just so they end up directly in your client's inbox. But for right now, let's just keep going. Let's figure out all these options and then we'll come back to that. So the next one is the SMS notifications. So here again, we have the Bookly Cloud settings and I think the only one worth it right here is the SMS notifications. Now this is a paid service, right? So every time, Bookly sends out a text message, they will charge you guys in your accounts and you can refill your account right here. So for example, we're gonna find United States and I think I think it's like 10 cents. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's 10 cents for every text message, which really isn't that much, right? And that actually saves a lot of time and they'll remind users about their upcoming appointments. So I will be covering the SMS notifications at the end of this section. But uh, let's keep going. So we covered email notifications, SMS notifications. Now let's talk about payments. Now, anytime someone actually registers on your website, all the payments will show up right here. Now in the free version of this plugin, there is no payment gateway. So users can book on your website and this is where you're gonna see the confirmations for those bookings. If you guys do upgrade to the pro, 
uh, you guys will be able to see how much they paid for it, right? So that is one benefit to getting the pro version is adding in payment gateways. And I believe every plugin in WordPress operates like that. So it's not just this plugin, it's all the plugins, right? So we'll come back to this once we enable the pro version, and then I'll show you how to edit the bookings once people have made payments, right? So we have the email, SMS, payments, and next we have appearance. All right, cool. So this is where we can adjust the color. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to open up a new tab right here just so we can see what we're working with. So here is our current booking form. But what I really want to do here is I want to give it this color scheme that we've been using, right? You guys can find this color scheme by actually opening up the page builder. So over here, I'll open up this page builder with the builder. And if I scroll down and click on this button, I'll go to style. Here we have color. I'll click on default. And here is the theme color. So I'll click on this, right? And then it's gonna give us the code, right? So you'll see that this is the color code. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this now onto our form, right? So up here, you're gonna see color and I'm just gonna paste that in there like that. And now it's going to beautifully integrate and look just like our website, right? So now the color makes sense and it looks really good. Now the first option is at the top, we can align this button to the left or to the right. We can also show a uh, we can also show the progress tracker. I do like this. I think this is more structured and stuff like that. You guys can also change this to something else like service or services or you know whatever you want to change it to. So you can go ahead and change the title for all these here as well, okay? And you can do the same thing for the categories, the service and so on and so forth. So you can go ahead and change the title for all these right here in the editing section. Now here are some options. So for every single tab right here, you're gonna have these options here at the top where you can show or hide specific parts of the booking form. So for instance, right here we have make selecting employed required. This will go ahead and say, look, you must go ahead and select someone right here, right? Um, if you don't have that checked, that means they can just book anybody, right? So I'll go ahead and check that. Here we have show staff info. Remember earlier how there was like staff information? You guys can go ahead and also showcase the staff information for your, uh, you know, for your members and your employees, right? And again, you can edit that staff info when you create a member, okay? Here we have show duration services and then also show category info, right? Now what we can do here is we can go ahead and save this and the best way to see how this looks is simply by going to your booking form and just refreshing the page. So now you'll see that we can select our category, right? Services. And let's just say I don't select anything, right? And I click on next. You're gonna see that it says we must select an employee. That is because we select the option right here to making it required, right? So what I'll do here is I'll select Daryl Wilson. And now you'll see that the info displays. So Daryl Wilson graduated from CSUN and CSULA. So this information propagates because we also checked the show staff info, right? So you guys can go ahead and uncheck these or check these just depending on how you want to approach your contact form. So that's how you guys can fully dust the services. Now there is one other thing I do wanna mention. Let's say you guys do wanna get rid of the category section, right? Like you don't need it. You guys can actually remove specific sections and this is actually available in the page options. So let's go over here to the booking form and I wanna click on edit page. I'm not sure why they didn't put these options right here. It'd actually be a lot more useful, but they put them in the back end for some reason. So here is the actual booking form, right? But we need to actually remove this and we need to actually use the elements, right? So right here, I'll add the booking form, right? So I'm not really sure why they did that, but that's just how it works. So you'll need to use the elements. And once you guys actually click on the actual form, on the right side, you're gonna see more options. And here, you can actually start to hide specific parts. So you can hide like the dates, the, uh, the weekdays, you can hide the categories, you can even hide the services, right? Um, here, this is saying default value. So what is the default selection of you want users to select, right? So that means like the default selection is gonna be legal consultation, right? Um, again, you can hide this if you want. So I'll go ahead and hide the categories and then I'll click on updates. So now you'll see that all we have here is the services and the employee section. So if you guys do wanna customize that, you guys can also do that from within the back end. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. So up here, I'll click on the short code and I will turn that 
off, right? But again, you do have more options right here available for the form. So I'll click on updates and view the page. And there you go. So now it's back to normal. Okay, so now let's go back over here. So now that I showed you guys how to edit this whole section where you guys can click on anything here and modify it to your liking, now let's go ahead and talk about the time. So now that we actually set the services, we can now select the time. I do like the show calendar option. I think this is actually a lot more easier on the eye. Um, you can always go ahead and show it like this if you want. You can show the block time slots, show each date in the column, show the nearest time slots. I do like the calendar, right? I think the calendar is actually a lot more convenient. Here we can show the block time slots. So that's basically saying you can't book these areas, right? I mean, you can do that and that'll make you look more in demand, right? Just depending on how you wanna approach your business. Or you can just say, no, we're just gonna select everything. But it's kind of inconvenient because if it is booked, it's gonna tell them they can't book it, right? You'll see that the selected time is not available anymore. So I do like that option, right? And of course, you guys can go here and you know you can adjust this to say something else. Um, and you can also uh, adjust this arrow right here and then also adjust the back button as well, okay? So again, you can go ahead and adjust this to your liking, but I'll go ahead and click on save here at the bottom. And then let's go to details. So there are some options here that you can select. You know, you can use the first and last name instead. You can have a show login button, but I wouldn't use that because that means they're gonna have to create an account and that can take time. But if you do want users to have their own little accounts, you can show the login page where they can create an account on your websites. They can also show the terms and conditions checkbox where they'll have to check this little box and agree to the terms of service. So uh, yeah, you guys can adjust this to your liking. And instead of phone, it can say something else like phone number or uh, your digits, you know, whatever it is you wanna put. So you can adjust all this to your liking. And once you're done, I'll click on save. Next we have payments. And here we only have a uh, pay locally method because that's all we have available in the free version. So that's pretty much it. And then also we have done. And this is where it's saying, thank you for your booking, congratulations, yada, yada, yada. However, I do wanna get rid of this show start over button. I don't really know why they have that. You know, I don't think people are gonna start over and book again, right? But you can have that if you want, but by default, I wanna hide that. Then I'll click on save. Okay. And if we go to our website right here and refresh the page, all the settings that we made will now apply to this booking form. So that's how you can adjust the appearance of your booking form. Spend the time, you know, go through each section right here and adjust these to your liking. It might take a little time, but overall, it's a pretty simple interface to learn. All right, so now that we covered the appearance, now let's talk about the general settings. The general settings actually have probably the most options. So we're gonna go through each of these tabs right here. Okay, now the first is the general options. And this is where you guys can also select the time intervals. So let's say for example, your company offers 30 minute meetings. If you select the time slot length, this will apply to all of your services, right? So this is a very important option for your business. So you might wanna select a time interval that reflects your company, you know, culture or how you guys set appointments for your websites. So out of all the options on the general form, this one is the most important, the time slot length. These other ones right here, you guys can just go ahead and take a look at these and see if you want to add these to your websites. I think most of these are just very optional, like powered by Bookly, you can disable that. Um, these other ones right here, you might not need to touch because this is regarding uh, how your information is stored. Show news notification. This is essentially the option right here. So you can go ahead and disable that. It does get a little annoying. You know, I don't really want that there anyway, so I'll just go ahead and disable that. So on your own free time, go to the general settings, and if there's anything here that you want to adjust, go for it. So now we have the URL settings, and these options could be a little confusing. So here we have the approved appointment URL. Now this is only referring to your staff members. So if your staff approves an appointment, you can redirect them to a specific page and you can enter that page here. The same thing for denied, and then also you can create a specific page for cancel appointment URL. Now, this written right here is referring to the clients. These are for the staff members, okay? So it is a little confusing. However, in the pro version of this plugin, you can create a redirect after the user has actually set a booking on your websites. So in the free version, that is not available, only that is available in the pro, okay? 
So you guys can create URL redirects right here. Quite honestly, I don't think you'll need to use this page, quite honestly. I mean, not unless you wanna redirect your staff, but I don't know why you'd wanna do that. But if you wanna do that, go for it. So next we have the calendar. So here are some more options where you guys can adjust something for the calendar. So you can put show only business days in the calendar or show business hours in the calendar. And this makes a lot more sense, right? Because you wouldn't want to display hours that you're not working, right? So you can go ahead and enable and disable some of these options for your calendar right here. And then once you're done, you'll go ahead at the bottom and click on save. Next we have company. This is where you guys might want to enter more information about your company. So I'm gonna enter an image right here for our company, all right? And then right here, I'll put in an address. Now this will actually propagate mostly on email forms. So when users get confirmations, the address, the phone number, and the website will show on those emails. All right, so I entered in some information right here, like my phone number, my website, my address, and then my email. And once I'm done, I'll click on save. All right, cool. Now let's take a look at customers. So this option can actually make it more convenient for your customers. Earlier, you guys saw that I was trying to book something, but I'm in Thailand, so you know I have to keep selecting the American phone number. What you can do here is select a default, right? So if you do want a country default, like if you're in Mexico and you only want to serve Mexican clients, you can just put Mexico. If you are in America, we'll put United States. And then the default country code will be one. So that'll apply for everyone that tries to book on your websites. And then there's some other options right here that you guys can adjust, but I think this one is probably the most important. So I'll go ahead and scroll down and click on save. Okay, next we have the appointments. So this option here is also pretty important. If you guys do wanna have your bookings auto approved, you can leave it to approved. If you want to change them to pending, um, you'll go ahead and change it to pending and then click on save. Now, when someone books on your website, that means here under the appointment section, they will not be approved. So you will have to go manually approve it. So you can see right here how the status is approved, right? And if you set that option, what's gonna happen is all of the appointments will be pending, right? So for example, it'll look like this right here. So it'll say pending instead. So that means all of the appointments will be pending instead of approved, which, you know, that's a big business decision to make. If you wanna have them auto approved or pending, it's strictly up to you, right? So let's go back over here to settings and appointments. So I'm actually gonna leave mine as pending. I do like pending just in case, you know, it gives you a little bit more flexibility as an owner. So I'll leave mine to pending. Next, we'll click on payments. This is where you can adjust the currency, right? So you can change the currency here, the price formats, and then also you can turn off or turn on the uh, paid locally option, okay? So I'll click on save. Once you guys enable the pro version, you guys will have more options for more payment gateways. Here we have business hours. So this is very important. So you do wanna select the business hours right here. Um, if you guys do have holidays, don't worry. We'll talk about that right here, but this is where you can select the business hours for your business. So once you select those options, I'll click on save, okay. And then we have holidays right here. So if you guys do have specific holidays coming up, you can go ahead and uncheck those, you know. So for example, on the first, we're not gonna work. So we are not working on this day, okay. And let's say for instance, you don't wanna work for the whole week. I'll click on the number six and drag it over here to 11. And I'll also say we are not working on this day. So this is how you can add holidays for your business and just add in days off just in case you don't wanna work. And then here is the log options. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll down here and I think we have everything covered. We also have diagnostics. I think this is something where if something's weird on your website, you can see if everything is working right here. It looks like everything is working except for the time settings. So if there is something weird, you guys can always go ahead and change that. And then below that we have news. And news is just basically some information from the company about new updates or if there is a new feature in the plugin, they will notify you right here. And then here there are add-ons. We'll talk more about add-ons a little bit later. I will be giving you guys some free stuff. I'll be giving you guys some free add-ons so you guys won't have to pay for them. So you're welcome. And then also here is a link to Bookly Pro. So overall, you know, we have covered all of the general options for the free version of this plugin. 
So now that we covered all the options, now I'll be showing you guys how to route your emails to your client emails. And also we're gonna touch base a little bit on SMS notifications. So really quickly, what we're gonna do here is we're going to install an SMPT plugin. So over here under plugins, let's click on add new. And what we're gonna do is type in SMPT. And this is the plugin that we're going to need to use. So it is WP Mail. 3 million active installs. A lot of people use this. It's a very common issue with WordPress is email delivery. So right here, I'll click on install now, and then I'll click on activate. Now, really quick, I just want to go back to the dashboard. So here's the general options for the plugin, but in order to make this plugin work, we first need to go to our hosting or accounts. So let's go back to our hosting or dashboard. Now, the first thing we need to do is set up an email server for our current server. So in your dashboard right here, you'll see free email. Go ahead and click on setup. Now we're gonna select the free email. So right here, I'll select free email. And now our email account is loading. Okay, so go ahead and just create an email for your server. So this is gonna be like howdy at darylwilsontutorial.com. Here, I'll put in a password. And you guys can also enter a recovery email address. But for now, I'll click on create new account. So right here, I can access the webmail. So I'll click on access webmail. Okay, so we just finished creating an email for Hostinger. It does ask you a lot of questions. And once you guys do that, it'll bring you to this section right here. Now there's no more action that needs to be taken. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Hostinger. And here is our current email. If you guys do wanna access this email, you can click on emails here at the top and it'll show your new email. So right here, let's click on manage. Next, we're going to click on configure desktop app. Here's the information that we need, right? So we have our email address, we have the incoming server info, outgoing server info, and so on and so forth. So this is the information that we need. So let's go back to our website. Okay, so once we actually install the plugin, now let's enter in some credentials in order to set up the SMPT. So let's scroll down. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is for the from email, you wanna make sure that you actually uh, put the email address of the one that you just created with Hostinger, okay? So mine was howdy at derwilsontutorial.com. So I'll go ahead and paste it in there right there. I'm gonna scroll down. I do also wanna turn in the return path. And next we're going to click on the other SMPT right here, okay? Cause we're gonna enter in some manually. And here is the SMPT host for Hostinger. So it is smtt.titan.email. You guys can also get this information by going over here under emails and going to configure desktop apps. They will also provide you with this information. So this is the outgoing server info. So it is smtp.titan.email. Okay, so this is available from your account as well. And the next thing we're gonna do is make sure we select SSL. The port is 465, okay? So port is 465. You guys with me? Okay. Now you're gonna enter in your credentials for your email that you created with Hostinger. So it is for this specific email. So whatever that you guys, you know, credential you guys created for this specific email, you're going to enter them again, okay? So mine was howdy at derwilsontutorial.com. And you know, I entered in my password and then I logged in. You're gonna take these same credentials and you're gonna put it over here onto your website. So I'll go ahead and re-enter my password. And then I'll scroll down and click on save settings. All right, so now that we connected this with the SMTP plugin, we now need to test it. So let's go down over here to tools. So now I wanna run a test email. So I wanna send this to my other email inbox over here, the Proton one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and send it to this specific email, okay? So I'll go ahead and click on send email. All right, so it was a success. It has successfully sent. And if I go over here to my email account and I refresh this, you guys will see that it has now arrived. Pretty cool. So we just got the email and it was sent successfully. Okay, so now that we know that this is configured, now let's go ahead and test this with Bookly to make sure the emails are being routed to ourselves and also our customers. All right, so I'm going to enter in my credentials here. I'm gonna send it to my other email. I'll put in some information for my phone and then I'll click on next. 
Okay, and we just finished booking the actual form. So if we go over here and check our email, you guys will see that we now have our information. So there is an email sent to the actual uh, customer saying this is a confirmation. And also there is an email sent to ourselves notifying us of a new booking. So that's how you guys can configure the SMPT plugin to make sure you guys are getting emails from your booking website. Now, the next thing I wanna show you guys is the SMS notifications. So I'm gonna scroll down right here over here to Bookly Cloud and click on Bookly Cloud. And you guys can see that on the pro version of this website that I have already paid for this, right? So what I'm doing here is all you gotta do is you make an account, right? So I'm gonna log out really quick and show you guys how to do this really quick. So here, you'll just go ahead and register and you'll make an account, right? And if you click on this, this will bring you to a login form, right? So you will have to create an account and then log in. Once you guys do that, you guys will then have to top up your account and add funds for your SMS notifications. So I'm gonna enter in my credentials here. And once I do that, um, here I can recharge. So you guys can see I can add in more money to my account right here by using a credit card. So if you do wanna use a credit card, you can use credit card or PayPal, right? Okay, so after you guys top up your account, here at the bottom, you're gonna see SMS notifications. I'll go ahead and click on this right here. So here is a list of available notifications you guys can send. Now, I think Bookly did a pretty good job here at creating templates for you guys. So here you'll see that there are notifications to customers about approved appointments, um, you know, notifying staff and so on and so forth. So there is a lot of them that you can set up here. I think the best ones is reminding customers about the next day appointments and then also a follow-up message. That is actually pretty cool. You guys can send them messages even after their appointment for marketing purposes, like for discount codes or whatever, right? Now, these three right here require cron setup. Now, cron setup is a cloud service and this is about $11 for the entire year. It's actually really, really cheap. I, I know I keep bringing up you know things to pay for, but um, it's a one-time payment, right? Or I'm sorry, it's a yearly payment. So Cloud Cron, it is $11 or $12 for the entire year. They also do have a seven-day free trial. If you guys do want those notifications sent to your customers, you guys can go ahead and purchase that as well. Uh, here, let's click on the SMS notifications. So it's pretty simple, right? You guys can enable these or disable these at any time, right? So here we have notification about their approved appointments and we can click on edits. And here's where you can edit the SMS notification. So this will be sent as a text message directly to your customers. If you want these off, just make sure that you disable these. And it's very important because the more that you send, the more your balance is gonna go down, right? So when you enable the SMS notifications, these are all enabled by default. So make sure that you guys go through here and disable the ones you do not want on because they will charge you, right? But I do like this one right here, reminding customers about next day appointments. Here, I'll click on edit. And this is where this will notify people based off the uh, appointment time, right? Which is very convenient, right? So here I'll click on save notification. Now you guys can always test this as well to make sure that this is working. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna send this to my phone number, right? Here we go. And then I'll click on send test SMS. All right, so it has been sent. And here I will go ahead and show you guys the message. I'll screenshot it and put it on the screen, right? So you'll see that I did receive it, right? And yeah, so we know that it's working and that users can now receive SMS notifications on your website. All right, so I do recommend going down to this list and just going ahead and adjusting this to your liking. You guys can also create new notifications as well if you wanna do that. But to be honest, they have really created a lot of the notifications for us that we already need. But for example, if you want to create a new one, here you'll select a trigger, right? So we have new booking notification, combines, verifying customer phone, and all these other ones right here. And then you can go ahead and adjust this to your liking and change this and also create new notifications. But by default, they have created many for us, so I don't really think we need to go that route. So next we have campaigns, but we don't really have a campaign yet because we don't have a mailing list. You'll first need to create a mailing list. So right here, I'll create a mailing list. This is gonna be, this is gonna be clients, right? So clients. So now I'll click on add recipients. 
Now you can use this to send notifications to your staff members. So here this says all staff, right? All services, and then last appointment, any, right? So you can use this as a way to touch base with your staff if you wanna just send them text messages, you guys can do that. Here, I'll click on manual selection, and this is where you guys can manually enter in the phone numbers. So all the phone numbers that you guys receive from your customers, you guys can put those right here, and then you can send them marketing campaigns. Now you cannot add more than 500 users. I mean, that, that's a lot. I don't know if you're gonna have that many, but if you do, congratulations. But this is where you can enter in their phone numbers, right? And once you guys do that, you'll click on add recipients. And then you can use this for marketing. So then over here under campaigns, then you guys can create a campaign list and then market to those specific clients, right? So like Halloween special. And then like uh, boo, you know, congrats on, you know, whatever. And then you can create a message for your specific clients. Once you're done with that, you'll click on start. And then the message has been sent to all of those clients, right? Just be mindful that once you send this campaign, it will charge your balance, okay? So just be mindful about that because if you guys start losing a lot of money on the marketing, it's because you're sending out a lot of text messages. All right, makes sense? All right, cool. So that is the campaigns and the mailing list. We also have SMS details. And this is the information that has been sent, right? So you'll see that um, some were delivered, some were undelivered and so on and so forth, right? You will see that my phone number right here was delivered, right? So that is my Las Vegas phone number and that was delivered, right? Here we have price list, just showing you guys the price list again and then sender ID. I have no idea what the sender ID is. So that's that, all right? But overall, that's how you guys can send out SMS notifications, how you guys can send out campaigns, and also how you can create follow-up appointments and notifications to your customers if you guys do decide to use the SMS notifications. So that is pretty much it for the SMS notification section of this tutorial. All right, cool. So now that we know how to use the booking plugin, now let's install the pro version. Now there is a one-time payment for this plugin. And honestly, it is worth it in the long run because you only pay for it one time and you never have to worry about a subscription or any of that stuff ever again. So in this part of the video, we're going to install the pro version and utilize all of the pro features. You guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Bookly Pro version in this part of the video. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase the Bookly Pro plugin. And this right here is the Bookly Pro plugin. You guys can access this page. There is a link below. And this plugin will actually give you a little bit more functionality with your uh, website. So it allow you to book unlimited members, unlimited services. It gives you a few other options like the redirection after the user has booked and many, many more features. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to upload this to your WordPress websites. Now the fee for this plugin is $89. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a one-time payment. So you never have to pay ever again. And the plugin is always updated, so you'll get future updates for free. Now, comparing that to other services, like I mentioned before, you'll have to pay like a $25 a month fee. So in the long run, you will save a lot of money going with Bookly Pro. So once you guys get to this page, you'll click on add to cart, and then you'll go through the checkout process. So here, I'll go to checkout, and you guys will go ahead and put in all this information right here, and then you guys can pay with credit card or PayPal. Now, once you guys are done, I will meet you guys in the account dashboard, and I'll show you how to download it. Okay, so here is the Bookly Pro plugin, and once you guys actually purchase it, right here, you'll click on download, and then you'll click on installable WordPress file only. You guys will also need to download your purchase code, and you guys can copy and paste this when you upload the uh, Pro plugin onto your website. So here is the Pro plugin. Now let's go back to our websites and now let's upload it to our websites. So let's go over here to dashboard. And we're gonna scroll down to plugins and click on add new. Right here, I'll click on upload plugin, choose the file, and then we're going to upload the plugin that we downloaded from ThemeForest. So right here, the zip file, I'll click on open and then I'll click on install now. All right, cool. Next, we'll activate the plugin by clicking on activate plugin. 
Okay, now the next thing is right here, you'll see the Bookly Pro add-on and you guys can enter your purchase code right here. So I'll click on purchase code. And then I'll go ahead and paste the purchase code. You guys can get the purchase code right here by clicking on the certificate and purchase code. And then it'll be in the text sheet that you guys download. So let's go back over here and I'll paste the code in. And then I'll click on save. All right, cool. So once you guys enter in the code, um, what we'll do now is we'll now explore the other options. So first let's click on the dashboard. All right, now before I go on any further, I quickly want to reference the Bookly Pro documentation. Now, when you guys do install the Bookly plugin, it does add a lot more upgrades and features throughout the plugin. Like for example, just on this analytics page right here, they added in revenue and also pending appointments. So in the free version, you don't get that. And it's kind of hard for me to explain every single thing they have changed in the plugin because it's kind of everywhere. You know what I mean? Like they've kind of scattered it throughout the entire plugin, but we're gonna go through all of the essential features like for example, the Google Calendar integration, they now allow staff members to manage their profiles and calendars. Users can now also cancel and change their appointments and have their own personal custom dashboard as well. So there is quite a bit to change, but we're gonna go through the essentials right here. But if you guys are curious as to exactly what you get in the pro, I will leave this link in the description of this video. But with that said, let's go through it one by one and let's go through all of the pro features and talk about the noticeable upgrades with the pro version. All right, so the first thing is the dashboard has changed a little bit. So you do get a little bit more options and they have a little bit more analytics options where you can uh, see users who are making money on your websites and then also uh, the revenue and stuff like that. Next is the calendar. So the calendar has a little bit more of a modern design, you know, they've changed it. So it looks a little bit more modernized and they have tweaked and added just a tad more features for the calendar. So it's not too much of an upgrade, but it's something that they've added in the pro version. Next, let's click on appointments. So next we have the appointments and there are two features that they have added in this section. The first is they've added a filtering system where now you can filter by employee, you can filter by customer, and you can also uh, filter by time as well in the pro version. You can also create custom services. So for example, let's say that you have Daryl Wilson, right? And then we'll select the service. Now, usually Daryl offers legal consultations or marriage paperwork. However, you now have an option for custom. And essentially you can create your own custom service and custom price in the pro version. So if you have a special request from the customer, like, hey man, can you help me with like a real estate problem? I'll be like, all right, cool. I'll help you with real estate litigation, right? I don't know, we're suing someone. And this will be like, you know, 200 bucks or something like that. And then I can go ahead and schedule it right here. So you do get the option to create custom services in the pro version of this plugin. All right, so next we have the staff members. So with staff members, you get the option to now create custom pricing for specific staff members. Now, what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna create a new staff member because that's also a feature in the pro version is to create more staff members. So we have Daryl Wilson, right? But now we're gonna have Patty Whack, okay? Patty Whack, and we're gonna put an image right here for Patty Whack, there we go. Okay, now I'm not gonna select a WordPress user. You guys can if you want. You guys can create, you know, you can create one from scratch if you wanna do that through the WordPress, um, you know, from right here. But I'm just going to make my own right here. This is gonna be paddywack at AOL.com. Here we can put Paddywack's phone number and Paddywack is the best lawyer ever. Okay. And then right here, I'll go ahead and adjust the color. For right now, I'm gonna leave it as uncategorized and my method payments. So later on, we can add specific payment methods. And what you can do here is now you can select um, specific payment methods for this member only. That is a little bit too much, I think, you know, because then you're gonna have a bunch of multiple different payment gateways on your website with multiple members. But if that's what you wanna do, you can come back to that once we add payments gateways, right? So now that we've created this staff, I'm gonna click on save. Okay, and now I'll click on edits. Now, once you guys click on edit, you'll have options here at the top. So the first one is the advanced. So we can actually limit her working hours per day. So normally what happens is if they do have a schedule, you can say, well, Patty only works, you know, five hours a day. So we're just going to limit her hours to, you know, five hours a day. 
So now if Patty is booked more than five hours, she will no longer be available for booking because you have said that she cannot work more than five hours. You also have the option here where you can enable or disable the iCalendar feed if you want to go that route. You can also add in the Zoom integration and also the Google Calendar integration. We will be integrating Google Calendar a little bit later in the general settings, but for now, I'm just showing you the options. And then once we get that going, we can always come back and we can add Patty to the Google Calendar integration. So now I'll click on save. Now, since we actually have multiple members, you can now create specific categories just like we did with these services. So right here, we have categories and I'll click on add a category. So you can categorize your members. So for example, we have lawyers, we have paralegals, we have you know, assistants, whatever it is you wanna categorize, you can now categorize them. So I'm gonna put lawyers right here, right? So I'll put lawyers and then we'll also put paralegals and click on save. All right, so now that I've created that category, I now need to assign Daryl Wilson and Patty Wack to the lawyer category because they are both lawyers. So I'll scroll down here and under the category, I'll now select them to lawyers. Same thing with Patty Wack, all right? And I'll click on save, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna quickly make two more members that are paralegals. Okay, so I went ahead and I added two more staff members. So now you can see that we have two members right here that are lawyers, and then we also have two that are paralegals. This is great if you guys do have an agency with multiple categories, like even if you're a trainer, you can have fitness trainers, you can have aerobics trainers, you can have all sorts of different trainers, and this is how you can categorize them so users can book by category for members as well. Okay, so now that I showed you guys staff members, now I'll jump over here to services. So right here, I'll click on services. So now we're gonna talk about services. And there are a few things that have changed here. Um, one of the things is you guys can now book unlimited services. In the free version, I think you guys can only book five, but in the pro version, you guys can now book unlimited. Now let's go ahead and create a new service here and I'm gonna walk you guys through step-by-step step on exactly what has changed. So first let's add a service. And here I typed in paralegal meeting because now we do have paralegals on our website. So I'll click on create a service. So right away, you'll see that we have paralegal meeting and we can now add this into specific categories, right? So maybe uh, we can add this under legal paperwork, right? And I'll explain why we do this in just a little bit. So I can now add an image here, all right? We'll go ahead and throw in an image of our paralegal. Let's just use this guy here, okay? And here we have visibility. So usually you wanna set this to public, right? Or you guys can set it to private, you know, if you wanna get, do that, but yeah, I don't know why, but yeah, yeah, that option is always there. Now for the price here, I wanna set mine to $25. The reason why is because now that we can have custom pricing for custom services, maybe paralegals are cheaper than, you know, the lawyers that are available. So um, you can always discount your services just depending on, uh, the type of service as well, right? Because maybe a lawyer doesn't have to, you know, do paperwork for a big legal meeting and said a paralegal can do that because that's their job. And then for the providers, we can now select the paralegals. So I'll say, you are, you know, this is a uh, Johnny Walker's and Jenny B's, uh, you know, area of expertise, right? We also do have an option here where you can now filter it by most expensive, least expensive and stuff like that. Next, we have the pick random staff member in case of uncertainty. Now, let's say for example, you don't want people to actually pick the paralegal. You guys are just going to give them whoever's available at your company. You can always enable this option here and that will do that. And then the next option is available payment gateways where you can assign specific payment gateways for specific services. So you can always do that. If you wanna have specific payment gateways for services or members, you now have that option. Now, right here under time. So now we're at the time tab and there is a new option here that can really help your employees. So I went ahead and I changed the time interval to 15 minutes, right? But our meetings are still one hour, but I'll explain why I did this. We now have the option for padding time. So what padding time is, is let's say for example, you have a meeting at like nine o'clock. You can say, you know what? We need 15 minutes to prepare, right? So you can add 15 minutes padding time before Right now, let's say for instance, you also need time to prepare for your next meeting, right? Because let's say someone books right after that, you know, if you're a lawyer, you need maybe 15 minutes to prepare for your next meeting. Well, you can also add padding time after your meeting. So you can add padding time before and also after meetings as well. 
And this will help your teammates prepare for the next meetings, just in case they're not rushed right away to the next appointment, right? So yeah, that is padding time and that is pretty helpful. So next we have the advanced tab. And right away, you guys can see that we can now create online meetings. Now I do recommend Google Meet and I'll be showing you guys how to integrate the Google Calendar. Google Meet is amazing, right? All you have to do is go to meet.google and simply just click on new meeting and you just create a link and you just give this to somebody. And after you do that, you can then join the meeting and then users can join that meeting just by simply clicking on the link. I use it, it's way more convenient than Zoom. So I will be showing you guys how to configure Google Calendar to sync up with Google Meets. And then right here, you guys can limit appointments per customer if you wanna do that as well. Now, this is a new option here, and this is actually really cool. If you guys do wanna have specific redirect URLs for specific services, you guys can enter that link here. I will be showing you guys how to do this in just a bit, but now you guys can add this for every single service in case you want users to go to specific confirmation pages for specific services. We'll come back to this in just a little bit and I'll help you understand exactly what I'm talking about, right? But uh, right now I'll just click on disabled. And the last option is the minimum time requirements. Let's say you guys have a meeting at 10 o'clock, right? Well, you cannot book one hour before 10 o'clock. So that means you'd have to book around 8.59 a.m. for that meeting at 10 a.m. Essentially, you're creating padding time for people booking appointments. And you can also do the same thing for people canceling, right? Um, I think a lot of people do like a day or something, right? Or, you know, I don't know what people's cancellation policies are, but you can say you can't cancel one day before your meeting, right? And if you do, we might charge you or something like that, right? So these are options that are pretty helpful if you want to create a little bit of padding and breathing space for your members. So right here, I'll click on save. I'm gonna remember my choice and click on no, just update in services. I don't wanna apply it globally. Okay, you can see here that we have that little meeting sign popping up, right? Because we did assign it for Google Meets, right? Now we can also go back and edit these other ones right here, right? So right here, I'll click on edit for the legal consultation and then I'll go to general. So now that we've done that, we now have the same options for these other ones right here. So we can go back and customize it. Um, one thing I do would recommend here is maybe adding in some images, right? Because now you guys can add in images and this may propagate in the appearance section and we'll mess with that a little bit later. But you guys can go here now and edit all of the previous appointments using the pro features for the Bookly Pro plugin, right? So pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and save it. So that is pretty much it for the services section. You guys can now basically add in more services. You can have different URLs and stuff like that. So before we go on any further, let's actually show you guys how to create URLs for specific services. Here we go. So I'm gonna go to plus new page and we're gonna type in thank you paralegal, right? So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm actually gonna create a final URL for paralegals and also one for lawyers. So I'll go ahead and quickly make one. Okay, so I quickly made a page for our paralegals. Now this is only for our paralegals, right? So what I'll do here is click on update. And now we have our services for the paralegals, right? So over here, I'll click on edit. And what I'm gonna do here is go to the advanced final URL, and then I'll paste that URL in there, right? Okay, and then also this one right here, cause this is also a paralegal feature, right? or a paralegal category. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there and save that as well. Okay, so now we have essentially created two different uh, URLs for our paralegals and we can go ahead and now make a new one for our lawyers. So I'll go ahead and make a new one right here. And then right here, I put, thank you, the lawyer will see you soon. And I'll just put that in the centered and I'll take that out and then I'll update this one. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm kind of creating like thank you pages, right? But I'm just creating them for specific services. So right here, I'll view the page. I'll copy this link and then I'll go over here and now I can apply it to these three services. All right, great. So now I've created specific thank you pages for specific services and we can test it. All right, so right here, I'm gonna go ahead and select um, a service, right? So I'm first going to select legal services, right? and paralegal meeting, right? And this is gonna be with Johnny Walker. Okay, I'll click on next here and I'll just select a random time. Just agree here, put in a phone number, click on next. I will pay locally 
and then it's going to take me to the done page. And it's gonna say, thank you, paralegal. See, there you go, awesome. So now you guys can see we have a, a custom thank you page for our paralegal services. And now let's test it with the lawyers. So let's see if I can go back here. Can I go back to the booking page? All right, cool. And now I will select legal consultation with Daryl Wilson, right? Go ahead and throw in a time here, all right? Oh, phone number, there we go. All right, so I booked a phone number time and now it's gonna redirect us to the lawyer page. So, oh, look at that. We now have custom pages for custom services. How about that? Pretty cool. Okay, so now that we understand these services, now let's go ahead and jump to the next section, which is customers. So next we have the customers and not a lot has changed, but there are some helpful features that they've added. The first thing is you guys can now unlimited customers for your customer base, right? You guys can now export this as well to a SCV. This is great if you guys do want to export this and upload it to an email provider like MailChimp where you can do email marketing for your uh, client base. You guys also do have the option here to add in a little bit more fields, right? So you can add in the first name, last name, um, birth dates, Facebook address, and so on and so forth, if you guys want to fill out that information. So it is pretty helpful, you know, and you guys can also search through customers as well to find specific customers you're looking for. So if we're looking for like, let's see, do we have John? Let's see, let's see if we can find John, there we go. So if your customers do call, you can look for their information with the filter instead of scrolling down and looking for them. Now, before we go on to the email notification section, I quickly want to backtrace here and show you guys that in the, sorry, the calendar section, that um, you guys now have your members up here, right? And you can just click on your members and this will showcase all of their appointments and stuff like that. So this is a really quick filter on how to actually, you know, see their meetings and stuff like that. It's pretty quick. And then again, you guys can filter by services and staff because we did add more staff and services. And once you guys do add staff, they'll appear right here in this really, you know, really clean format where you can just quickly go through and browse for their meetings right there. All right, now we're gonna talk about email notifications and SMS notifications. Now, in the pro version, nothing has really changed, okay? So uh, this right here is the free version, right? And the pro version gives the option for email logs. The only thing the pro version really did here was they actually added in a little bit more right here. You know, they added a little bit more templates and they also added the option for cron, uh, for cron reminders, right? Now this requires cron setup. So this is essentially automated emails that will go directly to your uh, customers uh, to remind them about their appointments. Now in this video, we're not gonna cover cron because that requires us to go into your server and start adding in lines of code. However, I do have a solution for all of you. So what you guys can do here is, uh, there are documentation here on how to actually add in cron. And all you gotta do is configure a line in your PHP setting, which is very, very simple to do. They show you here how to do it, right? Now, if you guys are not dev savvy, which I'm sure many of you are not, you guys can also go to Fiverr and just type in cron and these guys can do it for you for like 15 bucks. Okay, it's really simple to do, but just because it's uh, sensitive regarding coding and stuff like that, I just want to, uh, forward you guys to this website where they can do it for like 15 bucks instead of you doing it and guessing if you did it right and stuff like that, right? So I will refer you guys to Fiverr if you guys do want to set up cron. But basically in the email notifications, nothing really has changed except the email log setting right here where they show you the email logs. Um, I actually went through the documentation and I actually looked at the free and the pro and they are essentially the same thing. And even here under their uh, pro features, you can do all this in the free version. So I'm a little confused here as to why this would be considered a pro feature when you can do this in the free. Maybe there's something here I'm missing, but I was pretty prepared for this tutorial. So I just couldn't find what you get in the pro. So um, yeah, the pro version, you do get the option for cron setup for your emails, and you also get the option for email logs to check your email history and stuff like that, okay? And for the SMS notification, so you can use SMS notifications in the free and also the pro version, and you guys will need to set up cron, which means you'll have to go ahead and purchase the cloud cron. And then I highly recommend that you guys go to Fiverr right here and just hire someone to set up the cron for you, just in case you're not familiar with cron jobs. All right, now the next option we're gonna talk about is the general settings. Now there are a lot more options in the general settings. In this part of the video, I'm gonna go through these options here and show you how they all work. 
We're also gonna integrate Google Calendar and I'll also show you some other options that you guys can set up here. Now let's first talk about the noticeable options, right? So over here under URL settings, you guys will now have the option to redirect users for the final step. Now this will override the actual services. So if you guys actually have a custom service page for your services, this will actually override it. And what you can do here is if the user has created a final booking, you can redirect all of them to a final URL. I did show you guys earlier how to do this. So over here, I'll just give you guys a quick little preview. I'll just quickly go ahead and create a page. So this is gonna be the thank you page. The thank you page. I'll click on publish and publish. And then I'll edit this with Elementor. Okay, so I'll, I quickly created a thank you booking confirm page right here. And all I'm gonna do is take this URL and then put it inside of these general settings. So now I'll go ahead and paste the URL. I'll paste it here and then I'll click on save. So this page right here is now my confirmation page when someone books on our booking websites. Okay, and the next feature that is worth noticing in the pro is now the option to make appointments pending. So right now, whenever people book on your website, they're automatically approved. However, you guys can now change this to pending and then you guys can go ahead and manually approve those appointments because sometimes maybe there's something going on and you want them to be pending before you actually approve them. So you can now go ahead and adjust it. You do have some other options here that they've added like display time slots and stuff like that. So they have added a little bit more features right here like the time delimiter as well. There are some other options here that you guys can check out, but um, I think overall these options are all available in the free version as well. So next let's go ahead and go to the Google Calendar. Now I'll be showing you guys how to integrate this with Google Calendar. It is pretty simple. I'll walk you guys through this step by step, but you guys will need to create a Gmail account. If you guys don't have one, you guys will need to create one. And if you guys are already using it, well, this should be pretty simple. So right here, let's go ahead and first click on this link right here, and we're gonna create an app. So click on Google Cloud Platform. So here is the Google Cloud. Now what Bookly did that's really cool is right here, you guys can actually click right directly on this link and this will take you to the Google Calendar API. So once you guys are here, you'll first click on Enable API. Next on the left sidebar, let's click on Credentials. And now we're gonna create a new credential. So right here, I'll click on Create Credentials. And now we're gonna select the OAuth Client ID. So the first thing it's gonna ask us is application type. All we're gonna do is select Web Application and we can give this a name, Bookly Websites. And then we're gonna scroll down and here you're gonna see Authorize Redirect URLs. Right here, click on Add URL. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our website and we're gonna copy this URL and then we're gonna paste it in here. And then we'll scroll down and then we'll click on Create. So now a message will pop up right here that's giving us our client ID and our client secret. I'll go ahead and copy the client ID, go back to our website. I'll paste it right here and I'll do the same thing for the secret. And then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and then we'll click on save. And that's it. So the Google Calendar has now been integrated. Now, if this message did not pop up for you, I'll go ahead and just click on okay. What you guys can do is right here under the ID, you'll click on the little pencil icon and your information will display here on the right side. So we have the client ID and also the client secret, just in case you close that pop-up or something might've happened. So now that we've integrated the Google Maps, now what we can do is we can actually go over here to our members and then we can select the integration for the member. So what I'll do here is for Daryl Wilson, I'll click on edit. And then for the advanced section, what we're gonna do here is we're now gonna sign in with Google. So I'll click on sign in with Google so I selected my username. Sometimes this page pops up where it says Google hasn't verified this app. And if that does happen, that's totally normal. Right here under the advanced section, I'll go ahead and click on go to my website and then I'll click on continue. All right, so now our Google Calendar is now integrated. And then every time that you guys um, you know, get like a notification or something or a booking, it'll display in the calendar. Right here under calendar, I'll go ahead and select the user and then I'll click on save. So that's how you guys can integrate the Google Calendar for members so it'll always display on their Google Calendar. So next, let's go back to settings and let's keep going down here. So I'll click on the settings icon. 
and we just finished the Google Calendar integration. Now there is WooCommerce. So the next option is the WooCommerce integration. Now I really don't like this integration, but if you guys are using WooCommerce, it does give you options for free payment gateways like Stripe, PayPal, and other various payment gateways. So you don't have to purchase or use the other add-ons. So I'll just go ahead and walk you guys through how to do this. You guys don't have to follow me here. Um, if you guys are familiar with WooCommerce, then you guys might know. If you are not, then you guys can just watch me and see if this is for you or not. So right here under plugins, I'll go to add new, and I'm gonna type in WooCommerce. So for those of you who don't know what WooCommerce is, it is a platform that allows you to create products and sell on your website. Essentially, it turns your website into an e-commerce website. I do have many tutorials on WooCommerce. If you guys do wanna learn more, I'll go ahead and put that tutorial in the description. But for right now, I'll just activate the WooCommerce plugin. So now it's taking me through their wizard, but I'm gonna skip the guided setup and I'm gonna put my location. Okay, and then over here, you'll see that we have products. So I'll click on add new products. And then we're gonna create a name for our booking product. So this, this is gonna be like our consultation. So now I'm gonna scroll down right here, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a price, right? So $100, okay? Now, this kind of sucks because you guys can't really adjust the price per booking, right? So that's just how it is, but you know, this might be for you. If you, I'll show you guys, here we go. Here, I'll just go ahead and throw in some description, and then I'll throw in a product image, okay? And then I'll click on publish, okay? Now, since I created that product over here under the bookly options, I'll go back to settings. We will now have the option to add this product there. So over here under WooCommerce, I'll enable this. And then I will add in the consultation. Okay. We'll scroll down to the bottom and then I'll click on save. Now, what this does here is it allows you to check out with WooCommerce. And it is pretty cool because you know, you can add different payment gateways here. So now I can add in Stripe, right? So now you can add in all these free payment gateways like Stripe right here. So I can now use Stripe. You can use Apple Pay and so on and so forth, right? But um, for now, I'll just go ahead and show you guys how this works. So I'll just go to visit site. I'll book an appointment and I'll just, you know, go to next, select something really quick, put a phony number, agree to the terms, and click on next. So essentially now it's gonna take us to this cart right here. So this is what WooCommerce does, right? It turns your website sort of into like an e-commerce website. Here's the image and what users can do is they can now proceed to check out and purchase it. Now we will be adding in uh, payment gateways a little bit later, but if you guys do have some payment gateways, you guys can add them. I'm not gonna go through how to integrate Stripe with WooCommerce and all these other payment gateways because I do have other videos covering that. So I will leave those in the description if you do wanna integrate Stripe or some other uh, payment merchant. But the user will go ahead and fill out their information and then they'll click on place order. And then it takes them to the thank you page for the WooCommerce checkout. Now, since we've already created a redirection for Bookly, unfortunately, WooCommerce has their own checkout page. So this is the final page they'll be brought to. So it will not take them to a final redirection page because WooCommerce does not have that option yet. So that is how you guys can integrate WooCommerce. It is pretty helpful if you guys don't want to purchase the add-ons for the payment merchants or the payment services. So that is one pro, but the caveat is that you can't really adjust the pricing. So over here, I'll go to the bookly and let's go back to settings. So next we have the Facebook integration. Now, again, I'm gonna actually gonna refer you guys over here to fiverr.com where you guys can actually have someone set this up for like $10. It's really, really cheap. The only reason why I'm not doing it is because they constantly change their interface. So I've noticed in my videos when I show people how to do it, they keep moving the settings around and the options depreciate very quickly. So unfortunately, I'll be skipping this, but if you guys do wanna create an app for Facebook, you can do it right here or just go ahead and go the easy routes, pay someone $10 and they can do it for you. It's really simple. It is a little time consuming, but overall it's pretty simple to work with. So the next option is the Zoom integration and also the big blue button. We're not gonna be covering this because we've already covered Google Calendar. Quite honestly, Google Calendar is much more convenient and easier than Zoom because here they have to download an app, they have to make an account. But here with Google Meet, you guys can just go ahead and click on create a new meeting 
copy this, and then everyone can join the meeting right away without downloading any software. Another way to do this is if you guys did not integrate Google Calendar, what you guys can do here is simply just go ahead and click on new meeting, create a link right here, and just email this to your client and tell them when to join it. It's very convenient, it's very fast, it's free, and it's much more convenient than going the Zoom route where they have to uh, download Zoom and go that route, right? So I won't be covering Zoom, but if you guys do want to go with those integrations, go for it. So here's where you can have specific people manage Bookly appointments. So for example, here we have administrator, editor, Bookly supervisor, and so on and so forth, right? Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and save this really quick, and I'll show you how to apply these to someone if you want to have someone manage your appointments. Right here under users, I'll click on add new. And let's say, for example, you guys hired someone to do all of the meetings for you. Right here, I'll put Jennifer, and her email is jennifer at able.com, Jennifer Brinks. And this is gonna be her password. Now, this information will be sent to her specific email. So make sure that you guys do send this to the correct email. So next we have role. So you guys can select administrator, right? Editor, and then also the Bookly admin and supervisor. Now, earlier I selected editor as someone who can set up Bookly appointments. So you do wanna make sure that you set the specific role for that person, right? So let's say, for example, I select editor, okay? Here, I'll click on add new user. And now you'll see that Jennifer right here is in our system and she is the editor. If we go back over here to Bookly and go to settings, user permissions, you will see that I have made the editor right here as someone who can manage Bookly appointments, okay? So you guys can go ahead and set who you guys want to set up appointments and stuff like that. Now you guys might be asking yourself, well, how do these people even log in? So let's go ahead now and open up a new browser here so your admins will go up here and type in wp-admin, and this is where they can log in at al.com. And then she'll go ahead and enter her in her password. She'll click on login. And then here you'll see Bookly. So what this person can do now is they can go ahead and take a look at the calendar here. They can view everything, right? And if they click on it, they can also make new appointments. So this is great. If you guys do hire someone, they can go ahead and modify the calendar, the appointments. They can also check customers. So this is something that you might wanna to give to like a assistant or someone who is managing all of your appointments. So you guys can create accounts for them and then they can log in directly on your website. So that is pretty much the user permission options. It gives users the permission to modify your appointments. Next we have payments. And right here, you're gonna see a new option for PayPal. However, PayPal has depreciated PayPal Express Checkout. So I will be giving you guys a free plugin to actually integrate Stripe Payment Gateway. So we're gonna talk more about that in the Stripe add-on section, but I will be giving you guys the plugin for free. So that is pretty much it for the general settings. Now, I do want to just remind you guys that your staff members now have the ability to log in and log out of their websites and also modify their appointments. So right here we have Paddywhack, right? So I'll click on edit. And what we can do here now is we can go ahead and create usernames for our staff. And with this, the user can now go ahead and log in to look at their appointments. So I'll go ahead and quickly create a new WordPress user. And then I'll click on save. So now we have user Paddywhack. And over here, if I click on users, I'll click on all users. It now created a user right here for Paddywhack. So I'll click on Paddywhack. So here is the information for Paddywhack. And right here under role, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this to Bookly Supervisor. Essentially what this is gonna do is this is going to allow your members to actually modify and check out their own appointments so they can log in directly on your websites. So I'll go ahead and change that to Bookly Supervisor. Scroll to the bottom and then click on update user. Next, I'll just make sure that over here under the settings, under the user profile, that this person has permission. So user permission. So I just wanna make sure Bookly Supervisor is selected and then click on save. So now I'll go ahead and log in as a member. So here as an employee, I'll go ahead and log into the website. All right, cool. Now right here under Bookly, you can now see that we now have these options right here. So over here under calendar, so you guys can have your members log in directly on your website where they can modify all their bookings.
The next pro feature I wanted to show you guys was allowing your customers to register and log in on your websites, view their appointments, and also cancel them if they would like. Now, let me walk you guys through how to do this really quick. So let me just give you guys a example of how all this works, right? Your customers would come to your booking page and here they can go ahead and select a booking, right? So they'll just select, you know, some of these bookings here and they'll select the time. And then they'll just go ahead and put in the information here. They'll click on next. I'll pay locally. This is my demo website, by the way, you know, so this is also in the description if you guys do want to check it out. And then they have the booking confirmed page. Now, upon doing this, they will get credentials that will be emailed to them where they can log in and log out of your website. So let me show you guys. So right here, you guys can see that um, if I click on this, you'll see that the website has created credentials for us. It gave us a username and also a password. This is sent automatically when a customer books on your websites. And then also they get like appointment information where they can go ahead and just view their appointment. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna log into the website. So my name is Daryl John and this password was generated. So now let's go back to the website. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the login button. And then right here, the user can go ahead and log in. So the name was Daryl John, right? And then here is the password. I'll click on remember me and then I'll click on login. So right now the user is logged into the website. You'll see his icon appears. And if I click on the account page, you guys will then see that we have appointments. And here your customers can view their appointments. Um, here is the service, the date and time. Um, the time zone we can take out. You guys can totally modify this page and add in more columns if you'd like. And then also here we can cancel appointments. So I went ahead and I canceled the appointments and voila, the appointment is now gone. So we have canceled that appointment. So if you guys do want something like this, I'll go ahead and quickly show you guys how to set all this up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we need to first allow users to register on our websites. This can be found in the general settings. So over here under dashboard, we'll go over to, I believe it is settings, and then we'll click on general. You wanna make sure under the membership that anyone can register. This is very important because if you don't check this, people cannot register on the website. So I'll go ahead and scroll down and then click on save changes. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to create a page for users to actually modify their appointments. So up here, plus new page. And this will be the customer's dashboard, right? So customer's portal or dashboard or whatever you wanna call it. And below that, I'll click on the plus icon. And here you can see that we have the bookly appointment list. I'll go ahead and click on this right here. And on the right side, you guys can see that we can actually uh, show or hide elements. So for example, I wanna show the cancel. You can show the status, like if they approved it or not. And then you can also like show or hide these other options right here. So I'll go ahead and click on publish and publish. All right, and then I'll view the page. So here's the customer portal, right? Now what I wanna first do is I wanna actually take this link right here and I wanna copy it. We're gonna use this later. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna actually go to the customize option and I wanna change this so uh, we can fix this button up here and also add in the login button. So right here, I'll click on customize. Over here under the button, now you guys have a few options here, right? We guys can actually link this to the customer portal. You can link them to the register. You can link them to pretty much anywhere that you'd want, right? So you can have the customer either register and make an account here, or you can make them uh, log in, right? It's really up to you. You can add both if you want to do that. So right here under the text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in login. This essentially tells the customer that this is where they can log in with the credentials that we mailed to them, right? And then for the link, we're gonna paste that link in there, right? So this will take them directly to the customer portal. Now over here, we have this account. If you guys don't see this, I'll go ahead and close it. And if you press enter on the plus sign, you guys can actually use the account here, right? So I'll click on the account and you put it over there, right? There we go, all right, that looks good. And I'll click on this. And here we have profile type. So it could be icon, avatar, or even text. So we can put like login or something or a register, right? Register. And then for the design, I'll change this to, I think we're gonna do a text color, right? Black, right? So you can do the, you know, you can do either the text or the icon. It's really up to you. And for the account URL, what we're gonna put here is we're gonna put the register button for WordPress. Now, this is the actual link to register for the website. So if the user actually has problems getting the email or something went wrong, this is where they can register at. So what I'm gonna do here is take this link right here and copy it, 
go back to our dashboard and under the accounts, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste the register button. So there we entered in the register link. Now, one thing too is for the logged out view, it's very important that you guys actually paste it here as well because this is actually going to show when they are logged out. So this is what they're going to see when they are logged out, which is most of your customers. So make sure under the logged out view that you guys do post the register link right here and then click on publish. So do you guys understand what I did there? Essentially, I made a login and then a register. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test this on my demo websites. So this is my other demo websites and you guys can access this in the description below. So right here, I'll go to free consultation, right? And I'll do the same thing, right? Go ahead and click on next. And I'll select a time. Here's the details, well, Daryl Frenchy, and then some random numbers here. gmail.com, all right, I'll put no. Click on next, click on next again. All right, so the booking's confirmed. So at this point, the user has booked an appointment, right? But there's no way for him to really log in on the website yet. So over here, I'll click on my email. And then right away, you'll see that there were a new customer and we have this credential right here. So what I'm gonna do here now is go to the website and then we're going to log in, right? Now, this pop-up form is really nice, I know, but this is only for the um, the Bloxy theme. So Astra does not have this feature. If you guys do like it, you guys can switch themes, no problem, you know? So what we're gonna do here is type in those credentials. So Daryl Frenchy, right? Daryl Frenchy. And then for the password, I'll paste this right here. Remember me. And then I'll click on login. Okay, so after the user has logged in, now you'll see that they are logged in right here and they can view their appointments. So if I click on appointments, you'll see that the service shows up, the date, the time. We can get rid of this time zone if we wanted to, right? And then right here, the customer can choose to cancel the appointments if they choose to do so. So that's how you guys can create a custom login page for your customers, a register page, and also show the number of appointments they have and then also allow them to cancel their appointments at any time. This is totally optional. You guys don't have to do it, but if you want, go for it. All right, now the very last feature of the Bookly Pro version before we go into the add-ons is the ability to change the appearance. This is my current demo website, right? And we're all familiar with this interface. But in the pro version, you guys can actually change the interface to look something like this right here, where your users can actually uh, scroll right here and take a look at services. They can filter by staff as well and see you know, what's available. So this is one option for you. Also, if we scroll down, there is another style where they can pick categories and then the people will propagate. Then there is the last option where if a user clicks on a category, members will display, right? And then here there's some information about the actual members. If they click on the member, the services that they offer will also propagate. They can also filter as well. So if you wanna go that route, I'll show you guys how to set this up in this part of the video. Now this is all from the appearance section. So going over here to our tutorial domain, all you gotta do is go over here to Bookly and then click on appearance. Once you guys do that, you guys will see a few different forms. We have the search form, services, staff form, the step-by-step -step form, which is what we're currently using, and then there's also the cancellation form. So the first thing is, let's click on the search form. Now, when you click on the form, you'll need to first add a new form. I'll go ahead and close this little notice. Here, I'll click on add new form. So here is our current search form, right? So what I'm gonna do here is first change this form title to search form and here we can change the color right so if you want to change the color to our current color scheme we can go ahead and do that right something something like that right and when you guys click on an element right here you guys have an option so you can show the calendar if you want to do that if i click on these services you'll have a few options so it really depends on how you want to approach your search form right so we have the placeholder which is service select service right here and then the default value, which means like, what's the default one you want to select? Uh, I would like, you know, I think select service is good because that forces the user to actually pick what they want. And when you click on any element right here, you'll have a few more options. If I click on the box right here, we can also change the width and the header height of this as well. So for example, if you want 300 by like, I don't know, 200, we can go ahead and do that. You can also adjust what you want shown right here, like the service title, the duration and the price, right? Now also there's these three dots right here. So if I click on settings really quick, you'll see that it takes us back to this color right here. That's how I originally changed it. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like this. I'll click on save. So we've designed the calendar section, right? So you guys can go through here, just go through these options and pick whatever you guys would like. The next is the time. So right here we have the time, so service, staff, you know, date, price. And you guys can go ahead and click on this and on the right side, you guys can adjust it to your liking. You guys can also click on the three dots right here, go to settings as well, and then also adjust anything else right here on this section as well. Then we have details. So here we have the current details and you can go ahead and you know add in the full name right here by clicking on the show button, right? If you want something to display, you can just leave it. If you don't want it to display, you would actually just you know show or hide it and stuff like that. So they do give you a few options right here on stuff that if you want to add for your search form. And then if I click on this right here, you'll see booking completes. And under the settings, uh, same thing, right? We can go ahead and just you know keep the color scheme just basic, right? So that's how you guys can basically customize the search form, right? So now that we're done, I'll click on save. Okay. And what we're gonna do is what we can do now is take this short code. I think the short code is actually only on the front page. Yeah. So you'll have to go back to appearance. Okay. Click on the search form again. And here is the short code. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to our website and I'll paste that short code in the website. Okay, book appointments. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna place it below here just so that we can all, you know, we don't have to keep switching from page to page. We can get a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'll go ahead and click on edit page here. And then below that, I'll go ahead and push enter. And this is gonna be the new booking form. And then I'll put search form. And then right here, I will add in a new block. This will be a heading, right? And this will be a new search form. Now there is another option. You guys can also make this form propagate by clicking on the plus up sign up here and then clicking on the search form. This will also make it propagate. So I'll click on update. All right, so here's our original search form and here is our new one. So you guys can see here, we have all these available options right here where users can uh, scroll and they can see the available uh, bookings right here. Pretty cool. Now, if you guys do want to add like a background right here, like I did earlier, all you need to do is go to the services and add in a background for your services. So let's do that. So for legal consultation, I'm going to add a quick little background and you guys can do that by going over here to the appointment section. I'm sorry, the services section, legal consultation. I'll click on edit. And then for the image, we'll just paste an image here. There we go. Click on save. Okay. Now let's go back to the page. So here is the form. If I scroll down, you will now see that that background displays. So that's how you guys can add a background to your specific images. So that is one way on how you guys can showcase the new search form. Now let's talk about the next option. So there is another option where you guys can have specific categories. Now you can see here, I didn't really add a background, but you can if you would like. So if I click on one of these, it'll then also propagate the form. You guys can also go that route as well. They are very similar, but it's just one step that you might want to add to make your site a little bit more transparent. So over here, Bookly, let's click on appearance. And here is the services form. So I'll go ahead and click on the services form. Here I'll click on add a new form. And the same thing, you know, we'll go ahead and add in a color. Now just remember, if you don't have an image, the color will propagate by default. So that's why they have that. Now here you can hide the category step and you can also hide the services step. So for example, here you have the categories, right? And essentially right now this is hidden, but if we don't want it to hide, we can uncheck that and that will force the user to select a specific category. So it's just another step if you want to go that route. So I'm gonna uncheck the category step and click on save. Next, I'll go to services. And here we can go ahead and display the services. So you guys can adjust this. You can change the width of this, right? Something like that. And then also you can display custom services if you would like. So you can have only specific services showing on your website. But for tutorial sake, I'll just leave all of them. And then always remember for the settings, guys, you just do have a little bit more options over here if you wanna adjust something else. 
Next, we have the calendar. And this is very similar to the other one, right? So essentially, all we did here was we added one step for the categories to display, and then everything else is the same like we previously have done, right? So all I'll do here is just click on save, and then we're gonna find the short code. So over here, appearance, services form, and then I'll copy this. And then we'll paste it on the website again. So here we go, new services form, all right? And then I'll just paste it in there, okay? And then I'll click on update. And here we go, we got the booking, we have the search form, right? And then also we have the category. And if they click on one of these right here, it will then also propagate this where users can pick based off the category. So that's just another way on how you guys can approach it if you want to showcase services in that style. Now there is one more I'll show you guys and that is the members. So next we have the staff form and I'll go ahead and click on this one. This is also very similar to the services. So essentially this is almost the same thing. So all we did here was hide the categories and then we showed the hide staff step. So they are basically kind of the same thing. They just reverted the options here. I'm not really sure if they can call that a new form, but I'm just the middle guy. I'm just showing you guys what this form can do, right? And then the same thing here. So they can go ahead and filter uh, based off of the staff and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and also save this. And then we'll get that short code again. Here we go. I'll copy this. And then we'll go back over here and paste it. Perform. Now there is one thing to note. When you guys do create members and you add the biography, you guys can choose to have the biography display. So here we go, booking page. We have our search form. We have the services. And then we have the actual members right here. So you'll see here how we have like, you know, Daryl Wilson graduated from CSUN, Paddywhack is the best lawyer and so on and so forth. And if I click on Daryl Wilson, all of the available services that Daryl Wilson has to offer will also propagate right here. So that is pretty much it for all of the forms. You guys can go ahead and choose any of these forms and design them and decorate them any which way you like. My personal opinion, I do like the default booking page because I feel like this is optimal for a fast, convenient checkout, but you guys can choose any type of form you guys would like. So party people, that is pretty much it for the pro section of this video. I hope that you guys did enjoy this part of the video. We went through all the options here. I explained to you how to showcase different forms. Uh, you guys can go ahead and check this demo website here at any time if you guys do just want to reference it. Now this is another domain, but you know, it's the same plugin. Now in the very next section, we're gonna talk about add-ons. And this is where we're going to integrate Stripe as a payment gateway so you can start accepting money on your websites. I will also be giving you guys the add-on for free and that will be available in the description of this video. So here I'll go ahead and pay locally and we are done. So congratulations guys, we have successfully finished the pro version of this tutorial. If you guys do have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. All right, party people, in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Bookly Pro add-ons and we'll also be giving you all some freebies. Now, in case you guys do wanna access the add-ons, here at the bottom under Bookly, at the way bottom, you'll see this add-ons, and this will take you to the most popular best-selling add-ons. So the first one, obviously, is Bookly Pro, which is the plugin itself. Then we have the custom fields. This enables you to add custom fields on your form, like asking questions or creating conditional logic. And then below that, we have the group booking. This is ideal, obviously, for like classes or if you want people to book like a large amount for one session. So this is typical for like classes and stuff like that. And then we also have the Bookly Stripe add-on and this enables you to take credit card payments on your websites. And then there's some other various ones like service extras and locations. It's actually quite funny. You don't even need this add-on because you can just change a category to a location and you wouldn't even need this add-on. So uh, yeah, that's that. But there are a lot of other add-ons. However, in this part of the video, I will be giving you guys the custom fields add-on. I will be giving you guys the group booking add-on and also the Bookly Stripe add-on all for free in this part of the video. You guys can download the plugins. There is a link in the description of this video and it'll actually let you guys download a zip file. So right here is the link right here. And what I'm gonna do here is press enter. Now I'm giving you guys these plugins for free, right? However, once you guys are using the plugin and you do want to 
you know, get support and updates, you guys can go ahead and download and purchase these plugins. So the Bookly Stripe add-on is around $39. The Custom Fields is $49. And then the Bookly Group add-on is $40 as well. You guys can also shop for add-ons by going over here to Code Canyon, going to WordPress and clicking on add-ons. And a lot of the top popular add-ons right here are for Bookly. So I'll change this to list view. So here you'll see if we scroll down, we're gonna see like the Bookly custom fields, uh, group booking, Stripe, service extras. Now there is one thing I do wanna mention, and this is my, you know, my personal opinion. I do sort of resent the developer for actually making so many add-ons because at one point when this plugin was developed, Stripe was an original pro feature. However, the developer decided to take the plugin out of the pro version and then resell it as an add-on and, you know, to me, I felt like that, you know, left a sour taste in my mouth because they're stripping all of the pro features and then reselling them as add-ons, which I was sort of against. So that is my thing. You know, I, th I think that developers should not be doing that. And I think ThemeForce should regulate these developers and make it so if they do sell pro versions, that payment gateways must be required. So that is my two, you know, my two cents. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. But once you guys actually go ahead and click on the link in the description, you'll see that there is this bookly addons.zip and you guys can go ahead and open this up and there'll be three different files. So right here, you'll see the bookly addons. If you double click on this, you'll then get this folder, right? So if I double click, you guys will see that we have one right here. This is the bookly custom fields. This one right here is the bookly stripe add-on. And then this one here is the bookly group add-on. Now the first plugin that we're gonna add is the Stripe. So I want you guys to find the Stripe zip file and download it onto your desktop or move it onto your desktop. And then we're gonna upload it and then we're gonna integrate Stripe. Now, in case you guys are totally new with Stripe, stripe.com is a free website. It is a very popular payment gateway. It is way better than PayPal, okay? So the fees with this website are a lot less. It is totally free to make an account and it does not cost you guys anything whatsoever. I personally use this service on my website, derwilson.com. And you guys can see that you know, we have uh, a lot of payments right here. People are purchasing our uh, templates, right? And um, it's a very convenient service and they automatically deposit the money into your bank accounts. And the great part is that they don't charge anything. They just charge like a 3% transaction fee, which is ideal for most brokers, right? So what you guys will have to do here is you guys will go to stripe.com. You will need to make an account with Stripe, sign up. And once you guys do that, whenever you make sales, it'll automatically transfer it to your bank account, which is very, very convenient. So go through the process, make an account with Stripe. I'll leave a link to stripe.com in the description. And once you guys do that, you'll be brought to your dashboard right here. And of course, you guys can see that we actually do use the service, you know, for the last three months, you'll see that's, you know, we made, we made $12,000 the last three months. I would say we're averaging about $4,100 a month, $4,200 a month in sales. So yeah, we are making uh, quite a bit of sales with this website. So I'll show you guys how to integrate this. So let's go back to our websites. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna upload the Stripe add-on. So right here, I'll go to plugins, I'll click on add new. And then right here, upload plugin, choose the file, and then we're gonna find the, uh, where is it? Here it is, the Code Canyon, and this is the Stripe add-on. So I'll go ahead and just double click on this, and then I'll click on install now. Okay, next we're gonna click on activate plugin. Now right here, they're saying, you know, they want you to enter the purchase code. So you guys don't need to purchase it now, but later if you guys do decide to rely on it and it becomes a big part of your website and business, then I would recommend buying it, right? But if you're just getting started out, I don't really recommend to invest hundreds of dollars into a plugin where you're not sure if you're gonna use it or not, right? So under the settings, you'll then scroll down to payments. And then right here, you'll see Stripe. And what we're gonna do is we're going to enable Stripe right here. Now it's actually really simple. They give you guys exact instructions on what to do. So I'll just go ahead and follow this with you guys step by step and show you exactly what to do. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my demo account. So demo business, drag this over here. Okay, so let's do this. So the first thing, it wants us to go to our dashboard and then it wants us to go to our webhook settings. So all I'll do right here is click on webhook settings and this will take us to the webhook settings. You guys can see I have quite a bit. And here at the top, I'll click on add an endpoint, right? So again, add an endpoint, and then enter the URL for the 
destination events. So what I'm going to do here, right here is copy this. Okay. And then we'll go back over here and add the endpoints. And then we're going to tell Stripe what we're using this for. So this is a, this is a payment gateway service for our booking websites. Okay. Now right here, it says select events. Now, usually in my other tutorials, we actually select charge, but for this specific plugin, we are not going to select charge. So they actually recommend us to select these ones right here. So payment intent, success, and then payment failed, right? So we're going to go over here and we're going to scroll down and we're going to find payments. So here we have the payment intent failed. And then we also have the payment intent succeeded. So those are the only two that it recommends. And then we'll just click on add an endpoint. So right here, we'll scroll to the bottom, add endpoint. All right, and once we do that, we'll then click on developers here at the top. Then I'll click on API keys, and then we're gonna copy and paste these keys right here. So the first thing is this publishable key, right? So I'm gonna copy this publishable key and I'll paste it right here. The next thing is we need to make a secret key. So if you don't have a secret key, you'll need to create one. So create a secret key. Here I'm going to enter in my six digit verification code. Here I'll go ahead and copy this. This is our secret key. And then I'll go back over here and I'll paste it. All right, and once you guys do that, you'll then see that you have some other options right here. Now you guys can increase the price or decrease it. And this is typically used if you want to have the user pay for the fees, right? So what I can do here is add a 3% increase to the price and that will basically uh, cover my Stripe fees, right? So the customer pays for it. Or, you know, if you guys are having a specific sale, you guys can add like a 10% discount for something, you know, or, you know, whatever you guys want to do, right? So those are the options if you guys do want to add or deduct uh, percentages to the price. The next one is the time interval, but you guys don't need to select this because Stripe actually doesn't really need to select crons at the moment. So that's pretty much it. And once you guys are done, you'll click on save. And that is it. You guys have now successfully integrated the Stripe payment gateway. You guys can also run test transactions. So right now we did everything in live mode. If you guys wanna go to test mode, just click on test mode and then just go ahead and repeat the process again in order to see if everything is working on your ends. If you guys do have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. And if you guys feel like you need a developer to help you out, you guys can always go to fiverr.com and hire someone to do it for you. But you guys should have no problem doing it because I did walk you guys through how to do it step by step. All right, so now you'll see that there is an option right here to pay with credit card. And if I enter in a credit card here, right? So I entered in a credit card number and it says the credit card number is invalid. So we do know that it's synced up with Stripe. So at this point, users can now accept real credit card payments on your websites. And after they have purchased this, it'll then take them to the congratulations booking forum that we have created earlier. So that is how you guys can integrate Stripe onto your website and accept credit card payments. Let's move to the next add-on. So the next add-on I'll be showing you guys how to use is the custom fields. Now over here on my demo website, you'll see that we have this booking form. And if I go ahead and I click on next, I select a time. You guys will then see that right here, there is this question. Now we do have conditional logic here. So that means depending on what I answer, it'll propagate more questions. So if I select yes right here, you'll see that more information pops up. You guys can do this with the custom fields. In fact, you guys can use buttons, you can use text fields, you can use checkboxes. There's a variety of uh, tools that you guys can use for your custom fields. So I'll be showing you guys how to use that. So first thing is let's go over here and we're gonna also upload the other plugin in the folder. So over here, plugins, add new, upload plugin, choose the file. And for bookly add-ons, we are now going to select the custom fields. So I'll click on open and then click on install now. All right, once that's done, we'll then click on activate plugin. All right, cool. So the plugin has installed. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna scroll right here and then you're gonna see custom fields. Now there's a variety of different type of custom fields you guys can add. You can add a text field, a text area, text content, checkbox groups, radio button groups, a drop down menu, numeric fields and so on and so forth. So on your own free time, you guys can go through here, you know, check out the ones you want and then mess around with those and then, you know, see which one that you guys would like, obviously. 
But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the checkbox because I feel like that's probably the most common one. Text field is also very popular, but there is already a text field for the notes section that comes with Bookly Pro. So we don't really need to add another text field. So right here, I'll add the radio button group. And here I'll enter a label. Now, this is asking them the question, right? So what are we gonna ask the customers? Well, I'm gonna put, are you pregnant? And you can make this required or not required. But in this case, I'll make this required. So I'll click on the radio button. And then here we have yes. And then we also have no, okay? Oh, my bad, no, okay? And you can leave this as default. You know, if you want to select one as default, you can go ahead and do that. So I'll just leave yes to default, right? So here we have one. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and save this right here. Now let's say for example, we wanna add conditional logic, which is asking them something else. So if they answer yes, what should we ask them, right? Well, we can create you know, something else here, like text field, like explain what's going on or explain the situation or whatever. But right here, I'll put radio button group, and then I'll put, do you need assistance? Did I spell that, did I spell that right, guys? Assistance, I don't think I did. Assist, no, I forgot the S. There we, there we go, okay, cool. And then here I'll put yes, all right? And then we also have no. And then also we have like, I will text you upon arrival. Like maybe you have a client who's pregnant and she needs help, you know, to get to your office. Maybe she's like, yeah, I don't know, like she's almost due. So maybe here I'll just put, you know, do you need help? And then you can put yes, no, I will text you. And of course you guys can use your imagination. There's tons of different scenarios where you guys can use this for barbers or doctor's offices or whatever, right? So I'll go ahead now and make this also required and then save this. Okay. So we have these two options, but what I wanna do here is I wanna actually make this one conditional logic. So I want this one to propagate depending on what the user answers here. So over here, let's select conditions and I'm gonna add a condition, okay? So here we have show what if you are what. So I'm gonna put show do you need assistance if you are pregnant? And then we're gonna select in and then I'm gonna put yes, okay? So what that means is I will show the do you need assistance field if they answer are you pregnant and if the answer is yes, okay? So I'll go ahead now and select save. And that's it. And now we can go ahead and test this. So I'll click on visit site, book appointment, and let's go back here. So here you'll see that I entered the full name, right? The phone number. Now, because I actually have the option to select it as yes by default, you'll see that this automatically propagates. I can always take that off, but you guys can see that if I answered yes, this will pop up, right? If I answered no, it will disappear. So that's how you guys can also add conditional logics to your custom fields. There are several ways to use custom fields, guys, and I'll let you go ahead and explore the custom fields on your own time, because obviously there are a lot of different custom fields to add. And you know, you guys can go through here, check these out and see which one works best for you. But that is custom fields summed up. It's a great way to get more information for your customers and also a, and a good way for them to ask questions if they need to. And the very last plugin I'll be showing you guys how to use is the Bookly Group booking add-on. This is ideal if you guys have groups and you teach classes or you want large sessions. And I'll give you guys an example. So here is the demo websites. I'll go to free consultation. And right here under legal field, you'll see that we have this new group booking. And under this group booking, we have this group service. Obviously this, this can be like a class, like a yoga class or a fake guru seminar, you know, or whatever it is you wanna add. And then here we have the lawyers, right? So this can be like, you know, the trainers or the people speaking. Here, I'll click on next. And right away, you guys will notice that there is now this number. So we have this number between zero and 30, right? So here you can see that we can accept a specific amount of people that will allow us to have a group booking for a specific time. This is ideal for pretty much instructors or classroom sessions or teaching, you know, whatever it is, but I'll be showing you guys how to integrate this onto your website. So this is the plugin. It is the Bookly Group booking add-on, and you guys can also access this in the folder as well. 
So let's go over here to plugins and let's click on add new. And right here, I'll click on upload plugin, choose the plugin. And for the Bookly add-ons, it is, I think it's right, it's right here. So it is the Bookly group. I'll go ahead and open this and then I'll install it. Next, I'll click on activate plugin. Now you guys can actually add this to existing services or you guys can create new ones. So let me walk you guys through this really quick. So over here under Bookly, let's go to services. Now right here, you'll see that I can click on edits and there's gonna be a new option under the advanced section. So right away, you guys can see we now have the option to add capacity. Now, usually this is selected to one, right? Because we only allow one, but now you guys can select multiple, right? So now if like you wanna accept bookings between one to a certain amount, you guys can now do that. And that is pretty much it, right? So that's pretty much the only option it gives you. Now, it does give you another option in the general settings. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'll just save that. And if I go over here to the settings, there is a new option for group bookings. So over here, group booking, essentially all it really does is change it from booked max capacity to available left, right? So it just, you know, there's two ways to display it. You can display as how many spots you have left, or you can do it like I showed you guys earlier, which is the booked max capacity, right? So I'll go ahead and save that. And really quick, let's go back to services. So once you guys get to services, if you guys do go to any of your services, over here, you guys will see that under the advanced tab, you now have the option to set the capacity. So you guys can go back and then set the capacity for any of your uh, services if you want to allow multiple bookings. But what I'm gonna do here is, we're first gonna make a new category. So over here under categories, add new, and this will be like legal courses. I'll click on save, and then we're gonna make a course. So up here, add service. This is gonna be our legal class, right, where we teach legal stuff. Create a service, and let's go to the general. So we're first gonna assign this to legal courses. We're gonna make a little image here, right? This will be $25. We're gonna select all of the lawyers, okay? And yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll then go to time and we'll say that this is about an hour long, right? And then for the advance, we can now set the capacity. So I'm gonna select mine from one to 30 and then I'll click on save. So next I'm going to update this in the staff as well. So I'll click on yes. Now also over here under staff members, you guys can also set the amount of time or the uh, schedule for your staff as well under the services. So right here, you guys will see that you guys can also adjust the legal class for this instructor. So let's say, for example, you guys have like a max of 30, but you want to split it between two different instructors. You guys can have one of 15, and then the other one can also be one of 15 as well, if you guys do want to go that route. But I'll just leave mine to 30 and click on save. Also, if you guys do go to the general settings right here, there is a new option over here for group booking. So under the group booking, you guys do have the option for book max capacity, which basically shows how many people are booked and how many people are left or just available left. Once you guys are done with that, you'll click on save. And if you guys do go to our demo website, you guys can get an example of how this looks. So right here, I'll go to free consultation. Here, I'll select the group booking, group service. I'll select Daryl Wilson. I'll click on next. And then here you can see that it shows we have booked zero of 30, right? So you can go that route or you can just show how many is left for your group booking. So that's how you guys can allow group bookings on your website with Bookly. Well, party people, that is pretty much it for this booking tutorial. I hope I covered everything. And if you guys do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And good luck on your booking websites. All right, party people, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to them, but no promises. If you guys have any other questions about booking plugins or WordPress themes, also let me know in the comments below and I'll always do my best to get to those comments. Until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.